Hello friends. This is Revenger what if how are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto had the power of Dragon's Claw. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. It was graduation day at the academy for Naruto. Next up Naruto, Uruka said. Naruto got up and went into the testing room. Please make bunshins, Uruka said. Naruto then did the proper hand seals and then said, Bunshin no JSUTU. There was a cloud of smoke and then three sickly bunshins were sprawled on the floor. Naruto, you fail. Uruka shouted. Come on Uruka, he did create the bunshins. Mizuki the other teacher said. Sorry Naruto, but you will have to do better, Uruka said. A few minutes later, Hey Naruto, Mizuki said. What is it Mizuki sensei? Naruto asked. I want you to come with me, we have something to talk about, Mizuki said. What's the matter Naruto? Mizuki asked. It's nothing, but I really wanted to graduate, Naruto said. I know but Uruka thinks he is helping you, Mizuki said. But how is failing me helping? Naruto asked. You see Uruka is also an orphan by failing you he want s you to train harder. But I know a way you can graduate, Mizuki said. In the Hokage's house. Naruto, what are you doing here? The Hokage asked. You already know what happens next, later in the forest. Aha, found you. Uruka said. You found me pretty quick, Sensei, Naruto said. I had only learned one technique. You mean you've been training all this time? Uruka asked. Yep. Naruto said. Hey, Naruto, what's that scroll on your back? Uruka asked. Oh this Mizuki sensei told me about it, Naruto said, if I could learn a technique from this scroll you'd let me graduate. Mizuki. Uruka said. Suddenly a volley kanai was sent Uruka. He was pinned to the side of the shed in the clearing. Do you know why you are hated by the entire village Naruto? Mizuki asked. Mizuki be quiet. Uruka shouted. It's because you are the container for the creature that killed the nine-tailed fox, Mizuki said. What? Naruto said. Now die demon scum. Mizuki shouted as he threw a large shuriken at Naruto. A loud thunk was heard throughout the clearing. Naruto looked up and saw Uruka in front of him with the shuriken in his back. Naruto take the scroll and leave. Mizuki must not get his hands on it, and with that, Naruto took off running. No matter where you go I'll find Naruto, Mizuki said. In Naruto's head at the moment, I'm a container of the demon that killed Kyubiu? SP? No wonder they hate me. Out of Naruto's head. Where are Naruto? Mizuki said looking for Naruto. Naruto being behind a tree began to run away until Mizuki appeared in front of him and kicked him in the stomach. As Naruto skidded to a stop Uruka punched Mizuki in face. Mizuki then punched Uruka in the stomach and kicked him the back. Then Mizuki slammed Uruka's head against a tree knocking him out. Uruka. Naruto shouted. Now it's time to kill you my little friend, Mizuki said. Naruto suddenly felt a wave of rage wash over and then he yelled out. Cage Bunshin no JSUTU. And suddenly there was 1000 Naruto's in the clearing. Time for you to go to sleep Mizuki, Naruto shouted. Uruka woke up just as Naruto did the JSUTU. The next minutes Mizuki lay in a puddle of blood. Whoops. Naruto said sheepishly. Hey Naruto, come here. Uruka said. What is it sensei? Uruka said. Close your eyes, Uruka said. Now open them, congratulations graduate. Thank you sensei. Naruto said as jumped on Uruka. Get off Naruto that hurts. Uruka said. Report to the academy tomorrow to get your new sensei, Uruka said. Man what a night, Naruto said. I get to beat up a teacher and graduate from the academy. I'm really a ninja but, I guess learning that some kind of creature that is sealed in your stomach brings you down, Naruto said. Inside the seal. Ah, oh, it seems that my container is aware of my existence, Godzilla said. I think we should have a chat tonight. A few minutes later Naruto is sleeping soundly, in Naruto's dream. Hey why am I in a sewer? Naruto asked to himself. As he started to explore, he found a hole in a wall and when he went through, he saw a giant cage. Well if it isn't my jailer, Godzilla said, let me guess you're the creature inside me, 
Naruto said. Wow you are smart, Godzilla said with obvious sarcasm. What do you want with me? Naruto asked. I want to make a deal with you, Godzilla said. What kind of deal? Naruto asked intrigued. I will give you some of my power and the ability to transform into a creature like myself, Godzilla said. And what do you want in return? Naruto asked. I want to feel, smell and taste again, Godzilla said. I will get to use your senses for my own. Sounds fair enough, we both get what we want, Naruto said. But there is one condition on using my power it is to be used to defend people and not go on a slaughter, Godzilla said. Why would a demon care about things other than itself? Naruto asked. I am no demon boy, but I do care about the way things are, Godzilla said. Okay I guess that concludes business, am I right? Naruto said. Yes that will be all for tonight, Godzilla said as he began to disappear. Then Naruto woke up. Holy crap, was I just dreaming the whole thing? Naruto asked himself. No you weren't boy, Godzilla said. Where the heck are you? Naruto said as he looked around. I am inside your mind boy, Godzilla said. Would you stop calling me boy? Naruto shouted. Then what is your name? Godzilla asked. Naruto, and what is yours might I ask? Naruto asked. My name is Godzilla, whelp. Godzilla said. How are you talking to me that wasn't part of the deal? Naruto shouted. I just want to what is going to be happening, Godzilla said. Okay well I guess I'll get ready to go to the meeting and see who I am assigned with. Naruto said as he walked toward the shower. Naruto was walking down the path to academy when Godzilla started to talk. Hey whelp. Godzilla said. What do you want reptile? Naruto said. You have some one following you, Godzilla said. It's probably Sasuke. Naruto said. I couldn't tell if it was him, I'm still getting used to their sense, Godzilla said. Okay I'll talk to you later scale face, Naruto said as he continued walking down the path. Just then, Hinata jumped down from a tree. Phew I think he almost spotted me, Hinata said. A while later Naruto reaches his classroom and sits down in the back. Naruto. What are you doing here, this is for graduates only, Kiba said. What can't you see the headband, Naruto said. Excuse me could you move, someone asked. Naruto turned to look and to his surprise at Sakura his crush. Move it, I want to sit with Sasuke, Sakura yelled. She then smacked Naruto's head on the desk and leapt over him into the next seat. Calm down whelp you don't want to get to angry otherwise you'll change into creature mode, Godzilla said. All right scale face. Naruto said. Hello class. Uruka said with no one paying attention except Naruto. Shut up you little ingrates, Uruka said. Everyone quickly shut up. Good now let's begin, Uruka said. You already know what happens. Team 7 shall consist of Naruto, Sakura and Sasuke, Uruka said. Okay the rest of you go to your rooms and wait for your senseis, Uruka said. Three hours later. Where the heck is he, Naruto shouted. This sensei of yours is quite late, Godzilla said. No really, Naruto said. Just then, the door opened and a head peered inside. You must be my new team, he said, meet me on the roof. A few minutes later on the roof. Okay tell me about yourself, he said. How sensei? Sakura said. You know, your likes, dreams, and hobbies, he said. Why don't you go first sensei? Naruto said. Okay my name is Kakashi, my dreams are none of your business, but I have a lot of hobbies, Kakashi said. He said a lot, but we only learned his name, Sakura said. Okay Pinky, you're first, Kakashi said. My name is Sakura not Pinky, okay I like Sasuke and I hate Naruto, she said. Well I'm not too fond of you anymore, Pinky, Naruto said. Sakura and Sasuke looked at him in surprise, he never talked bad about Sakura. Okay blonde kid, you're up, Kakashi said. My name is Naruto you stupid scarecrow, I like, training and ramen I dislike, Sasuke reptiles, pink haired idiots, Naruto said. Hey, Godzilla shouted, and finally the brooding one, he said. You already know my name, there are many things that I like and many things dislike but I'm not telling you, Sasuke said. Okay, my first impression of is that I hate you all, Kakashi said. 
Now meet me at training ground 7 tomorrow at 8, Kakashi said. Why sensei? Naruto asked. Because I'm going to test you so you can become genins, Kakashi said. What but I thought we already passed, Naruto said. No only nine of this year's students shall become genins, Kakashi said. Oh and don't eat breakfast if you want to throw up, Kakashi said before leaving. Well I'm leaving, Naruto said. Wait what is wrong with you Dobi, you're different today, Sasuke asked. I don't think that is any of your business, Naruto said as he walked away. What is his problem? Sakura asked. No idea, Sasuke said as he walked home. Hey. You might as well give up, Godzilla said, never, Naruto said. I have never lost a game of poker, Godzilla said as he threw two chips on the table. Aha, a good hand, Naruto said. Well let's see it, Godzilla said as he laid his cards down. I have a straight flush, what do you got, Naruto asked. I have a royal flush, Godzilla said as he grabbed the pile of chips. Looks like I win again, whelp, Godzilla said. By the way you have to wake up now or you are going to be late. Holy crap. You are right. Naruto said as he woke up. A few minutes later were dressed and out of the door to training ground 7. Hey Pinky, Naruto said. Hey Teme. You take that back right now, Sakura shouted. Will you shut up? I am tired of hearing you fawn over Sasuke like a deer after a salt lick, Naruto said. What is wrong with you Dobi? Sasuke asked. Nothing is wrong I just have a new perception on life, Naruto said. Three hours later. Okay sorry I'm late you see this old person fell down a hole and her cat was taken by S class ninjas so I had to retrieve it, Kakashi said. Liar! Sakura yelled. If you are ever late again I shall rip out your heart and feed to the snakes. Naruto said making everyone look at him with a surprised reaction. Okay well let's begin the test, Kakashi said as he pulled out an alarm clock. This is said to go off at noon, if you fail to get a bell from me before noon you shall fail and be sent back to the academy, Kakashi said. Begin, Kakashi said, then they all took off in different directions. Hey whelp you don't want to fight this guy head on, Godzilla said, at least not yet. Okay what do you want me to do? Naruto asked. Go get the other two for help, Godzilla said. Why should I let them help me? Naruto asked because that is the meaning of this test, Godzilla said. Then Naruto went to the find Sakura and Sasuke, what do you want Dobi? Sasuke asked. We have to work together to get the bells, Naruto said. And why should we help you? Sakura asked, because, you will be helping yourself in the process, Naruto said. Okay what do you want us to do? Sakura asked. The planning went on for few minutes. Okay you all know your parts, Naruto said. Sasuke and Sakura nodded. Good let's go. Naruto said taking off. Hum I wonder where they are. Kakashi said. Just then Sasuke appeared and punched Kakashi in the stomach. Naruto then kicked him the back, but Kakashi grabbed his foot and threw him into Sasuke. Sasuke and Naruto then threw a few kuniyas at Kakashi, but he just stepped out of the way. Naruto then created three bunshins and sent them behind Kakashi. The Bunshins grabbed his legs and chest holding him in place. Kakashi tried to hit them but could not reach them. Now Sakura. Get the bells. Naruto said. Sakura then leapt from the tree and ran towards Kakashi. Kakashi saw her, but could not move because of the Bunshins. Without much effort, she grabbed the bells on Kakashi's belt. Naruto cancelled his Bunshins and went to the stumps. Okay you all pass. Kakashi said. Good work, whelp. Godzilla said. Meet at the Hokage Tower tomorrow for your first mission, Kakashi said as he walked away. Well, see you later guys, Naruto said. After Naruto was out of sight he went to training ground 8. Okay scale face how do I do that technique, Naruto asked. Just take imagine that you look like myself, Godzilla said, and just so you know it will be painful when you do this. Great, Naruto said and did what he was told. A second later the training ground was filled with Naruto's screams of agony. He slowly started to change his form. He grew spines on his back and tail. His hands became claws. Until at least he was a perfect replica of Godzilla only smaller. Just so, you know he looks like the Final Wars Godzilla. This is cool, 
Naruto said looking at his new body. Try punching something. Godzilla said. Naruto went up to the dummy and gave it a punch. To his surprise, the dummy flew a few yards back. Nice. Naruto said. Now try to gather chakra into your mouth, Godzilla said. When Naruto did, a blue orb began to form in his mouth and when he stopped, it shot out of his mouth and it formed a stream decimating everything in its path. Cool. Naruto said. Okay that is enough training for today, whelp, Godzilla said. Naruto then turned back into his human form and walked towards his apartment. Hey whelp, when are you going to leave? Godzilla asked. In a few minutes scale face, Naruto said. Good, because I want you to kill something, Godzilla said. Great I have a bloodthirsty lizard in my head, Naruto said. Well what do you expect, I have been in here for 12 years without anything to do except insult you. Godzilla said. You do have a point, scale face. Naruto said as he considered Godzilla's words. Yes I do, now get going. Godzilla said. A few minutes later, Naruto was standing outside the tower waiting for his the rest of his team to arrive. Hey Teme. Naruto said as Sasuke walked up. Hey Dobi, Sasuke said. So what kind of mission do you will get? Naruto asked. Don't know. Sasuke said. Then the conversation stopped for a while until Sakura finally showed up, it was another hour before Kakashi showed his face around tower. Naruto quickly went up to Kakashi and punched him the stomach. Sasuke and Sakura just stared at him while Kakashi was trying to regain his breath. I told you not to be late again, Naruto said. Okay fine I won't be late again, Kakashi said, now let's get our mission and go. Finally, Sasuke said as they entered the tower. Okay Team 7, your mission will be to guard a bridge builder until he completes his newest bridge, the third said. What you expect these brats to protect me, Tazuna said while taking a drink out of sake bottle. Before he could take another drink, he was thrown against the wall with kanai to his neck. Insult me again and I'll cut your throat open, Naruto said. Naruto put the client down. Kakashi ordered, all right, but he better watch his mouth, Naruto said. Okay meet me at the east gate in an hour, Kakashi said before disappearing in a cloud of smoke. Well I'll see you guys later, Naruto said, where are you going, Sasuke asked. To go get ready for the mission, Naruto said. A while later team 7 was waiting for Kakashi so they could begin. Okay let's get going, Kakashi said, about time, Naruto said as the gates started to open. So how long until we reach the wave country sensei? Sakura asked. At this rate it will be two days, Kakashi said. That will be too long, Naruto said. Yes, but Tazuna can't run as fast as us Naruto, Kakashi said. As they continued walking, two puddles came into view. Hey whelp, those puddle are strange, Godzilla said. How so? Naruto asked. It hasn't rained for days, so there wouldn't be any puddles around, Godzilla said. You're right. It's probably two ninjas in a Gen JSUTU, Naruto said. Have some fun, whelp, Godzilla said as he started to laugh. Naruto quickly drew two kanais and slammed them into the puddles. A second later, the puddles turned red. As he withdrew, the kanais his team just looked at him. What? Naruto asked. How did you know there were two ninjas in there? Kakashi asked. It was quite obvious, Sensei. There are two puddles on though it hasn't rained for days, Naruto said. Hey, Godzilla said. Okay, Tazuna would you like to tell us why there are ninjas after you? Kakashi asked. After a long explanation about the economy of the land of waves being controlled by a man named Gato, and that if he was killed the land of the waves would go to ruin. So basically if you die the land of the waves dies, Naruto said. Yes, Tazuna said. Good because I am up for a challenge. Naruto said. Everyone, again, just stared at him. Well I don't know about you but I am hungry. Naruto said as he pulled out a bento box. Yeah let's have lunch, Kakashi said as he joined Naruto. Sasuke just let out a groan of disbelief. Great I'm never gonna get rid of these people, Sasuke said as he sat down. What do you want whelp? Godzilla said. What was your life like before you were sealed into me? Naruto asked. Why do you want to know about my life? Godzilla said questionably. I just think we should know about each other since we're stuck together, 
Naruto said. Well not to brag, but I was king from I came from, Godzilla said gloating. King of what? Naruto asked intrigued by Godzilla's words. Of the monsters, Godzilla said, I earned the title when I defeated all the monsters around the world. So did you kill them? Naruto asked. During the fight for King No, but when others challenged me and did not want to give up I had to, Godzilla said sadly. Wow you're okay for a monster, Naruto said happily. Same here, whelp. Godzilla said, would you stop calling me that? Naruto shouted angrily. Nope. Godzilla as he smiled at his reaction. I will talk to you later, scale face. Naruto said as he went out of his trance. What were you doing Dobi? Sasuke asked. Not that it is any of your business, but I was meditating you team. Naruto lashed out. Well sorry for asking. Sasuke said sarcastically. Yes, you should be. Naruto said darkly. Naruto I have had it with your attitude. You better start respecting Sasuke. Sakura said angrily. Well I don't care if he is the last Uchiha, Naruto said bitterly, to me he is just a jerk. For once you are right, whelp. Godzilla said, at least you agree with me, Naruto said happily. Come on you guys we have to get going, Kakashi said. Yeah let's go, Tazuna said, a while later on the trail they were walking on. Hey whelp, there is someone watching you, Godzilla said. Really now, I think I will have to meet him. Naruto said evilly. Just be careful I don't want to die now, whelp. Godzilla said afraid that Naruto would do something stupid. A sudden sound from the nearby forest alerted Naruto and he said, everybody down. As they hit the ground, a giant sword flew past their heads and embedded itself into a tree. A ninja quickly appeared on the hilt of the sword. I forgot the name Zabaza's sword. Well if it isn't the copycat ninja, the ninja said. You're the demon of the mist, Zabuza, Kakashi said as he lifted up his mask. Ought to face the Sharingan so early in battle, it is an honor, Zabuza said menacingly. Shall we begin our fight Zabuza? Kakashi asked. Yes let's begin, Zabuza said as he pulled the sword out of the tree. Zabuza then ran towards Kakashi and tried to cut him in half. Kakashi ducked and kicked him in the stomach. Zabuza then did a roundhouse kick to Kakashi's face and Zabuza then lifted Kakashi up and threw him into a tree. As Kakashi got up, he threw two shuriken and yelled. Art of the shadow shuriken, and the two shuriken multiplied into thirty. Zabuza quickly dodged the shuriken, but was met by Kakashi with a punch to the face. As he recovered, Kakashi kicked him in the back and tried to grab him. But Zabuza moved out of the way and did a downward slash with his sword, trying to cut Kakashi's arm off. Kakashi parried with a kanai and put an explosive note on Zabaza's sword before jumping away. With a bang, Zabaza's sword was blown to pieces. My sword! Zabuza shouted angrily. Well these things happen when you are a ninja, Zabuza. Kakashi said smoothly. I will kill you a, Zabuza never finished the statement he was about to make as two senbon needles went into his neck. As everyone stared in disbelief a hunter ninja jumped down from the trees. Thank you for distracting him, the masked ninja said with a monotone voice. You're welcome hunter ninja from the mist, Kakashi said. Then the hunter ninja took off with Zabaza's corpse. There was silence until Naruto said. Well I'm hungry. Everybody fell down anime style. Yeah, we should all go to Tazuna's house to rest, Kakashi said before passing out. Now we have to carry him there, Naruto said in whiny voice. Just be quiet and help us lift him off the ground, Sasuke said. You should help them whelp, Godzilla said. Why is that? Naruto bluntly asked. It is better to have people who like you than people who hate you, Godzilla said. Yeah, I guess you are right, Naruto said as he went over to pick up Kakashi. Once they reached Tazuna's house, they put Kakashi in the guest room and waited for him to wake up. Hey do you guys want to see Kakashi's face? Naruto asked. Why would I want to see our sensei's face? Sasuke asked. Oh come on, look at him don't you want to know what he looks like? Naruto said trying to coax him into joining. Alright let's see what he looks like, Sasuke said as Naruto reached for his mask. A hand quickly grabbed Naruto while he fell back in surprise. 
It's not polite to look at what you're not supposed to see, Kakashi said. So how do you feel after fighting the great demon of the Mist Sensei? Sakura asked. Like crap, but I feel that I am forgetting something, Kakashi said worriedly. What would you forget that is so important? Naruto asked. Oh shoot that hunter ninja was working Zabuza, Kakashi said. As he said this Tazuna spit out his drink and everyone else just stared at him. How do you know? Naruto asked. Because hunter ninjas are supposed to destroy the body on the spot, Kakashi said. With Zabuza and the hunter ninja. I guess I should wake him up now. The ninja said as he hit Zabuza's neck with his hand. Did you have to hit so hard, Haku? Zabuza asked. To wake you up I did, Haku said. Take that mask off, it brings back to many memories, Zabuza ordered. Yes sir, Haku said. Well I think we should head back to the base, Zabuza said. Yes sir, Haku said as he dragged Zabuza to the base. Ow! Zabuza said as a rock hit his head. After the battle with Zabuza, Kakashi told us to meet him outside Tazuna's house. What do you want sensei? Naruto asked in bored like tone. I am getting there, Naruto, Kakashi said nervously. Just hurry up, I want to go back to sleep. Naruto said cryptically, pissed off because he was woken up with a bucket of water. We are going to climb trees, Kakashi said, everyone face faulted. We're going to what? Naruto said questionably. Climb trees, but here is the interesting part you can't use your hands. Kakashi said hoping Naruto would not hurt him. You're safe Kakashi, for now, Naruto said before he began cackling. Everyone just took a step away from him. Okay let's begin, the way to do this is gather chakra to feet. Kakashi said as he began walking towards a tree. When he reached he just continued walking up the tree, soon he was at the top. Cool, was all Naruto said. But there is one problem, you can't gather too little or too much chakra. Kakashi said. Otherwise you won't stick or you will be blown off. This should be simple. Naruto thought. Don't be so sure, whelp, Godzilla said. When did you wake up? Naruto asked. When your sensei began talking, Godzilla said. I bet Sasuke Teme won't even be able to get a foot on the tree. Naruto said while snickering. He will probably put too much chakra into his foot, Godzilla said. Naruto. Kakashi asked while poking his head, Huh, what? Naruto said. What happened to you, Dobi? Sasuke asked. Nothing I was just deep in thought, Naruto said innocently. Well, you may start when ready, if you need me I'll be over there, Kakashi said as he took out his book. Pervert. Naruto thought, Yep, Godzilla said. Then everyone took off towards their own trees. Naruto got halfway before he lost his concentration. Sasuke put too much power into his feet and was blown off. Sakura, she was reached the top of her tree on the first try. Wow this is easier than I thought, Sakura said lying on the top branch. In Sasuke's mind, how in the seven hex did she beat me there, Sasuke shouted. Out of Sasuke's mind, good job, Sakura, Naruto said. Are you complimenting someone? Godzilla said surprised by Naruto. What if I am? Naruto thought back. Thank you, Naruto, Sakura said. You're welcome. Now if you can excuse I still have work to do, Naruto said as he ran for the tree. However, Naruto forgot to put chakra on his feet and just slammed into the tree. Ow! Was all Naruto said as he slid to the ground. Kakashi finally looked up from his book to see Naruto flat on the ground. He sighed and went over to him. What happened to Naruto and did you finish climbing your tree already? Kakashi asked. Yes, and Naruto forgot to put chakra on his feet this time, Sakura said looking at him. As Kakashi reached to wake Naruto up, he suddenly bolted up, scaring the crap out of them. Don't do that, you baka, Sakura shouted as she hit him over the head. My bad, Naruto said with an innocent grin on his face. Okay then, Sakura. You can go and guard Tazuna now while these two train so more, Kakashi said. Yes, sensei, Sakura said before she walked off. Again if you need me I'll be over there, Kakashi said. Whatever, Naruto said getting up. After an hour had passed, Naruto finally reached the top of his tree while Sasuke only reached the middle of his.
Just as Naruto was about to fall asleep Sasuke yelled at him. How did you finish before me? Sasuke shouted. Simple, you used too much chakra while I just even mine out, Naruto said. Yes but, how do you even it out all the way? Sasuke asked. I don't really know it just came naturally, Naruto said. This is the last time I ask you for advice, Sasuke said walking towards his tree. Naruto then went to sit with Kakashi only to find him asleep. Naruto then got a devious thought and pulled out a marker. A few minutes later Naruto put the marker away and just sat down. Sasuke finally made to the top of his tree and went to get Kakashi. When he arrived, Kakashi had a monocle, a mustache, and some black. Sasuke just stared for a moment taking in what he was seeing before he burst out laughing. Kakashi woke at the sound of laughing. What's so funny? Kakashi asked. Go haha look haha in haha the haha mirror. Sasuke in between laughs. There was two things with this picture, one Sasuke is laughing and two what is wrong with my face, Kakashi thought. When Kakashi reached the mirror in the house, he did nothing for a few seconds except yell. Naruto. I think you better run, Dobi, Sasuke said beginning to calm down. Yeah you're right, Naruto said as he took off down the path. Suddenly the door to Tazuna's house was ripped off and an angry Kakashi started to chase Naruto. Get back here Naruto, Kakashi shouted. You dissevered it sensei, Naruto said before being thrown to the ground. Sasuke just watched the scene with mild interest. A second later a blood chilling scream was made by Naruto. Kakashi then walked out of the bushes. What happened to Naruto? Sasuke asked. He'll be fine after an hour or so, Kakashi said walking quickly away from the area. Sasuke went behind the bush to a bloody Naruto unconscious on the ground. Sasuke just shrugged and began to drag him back to the house. Twenty minutes had passed before Naruto woke up. Kakashi can hit really hard, Naruto said. Then Sakura and Tazuna came back. What the heck happened to Naruto? Sakura asked. Naruto played a prank on Kakashi and Kakashi started to beat the crap out of him, Sasuke said. Ouch. Tazuna said. By the time I got there he was all bloody, Sasuke said. So what did he do? Sakura asked Curios. He drew on Kakashi's face when he was asleep, Sasuke said. Naruto you shouldn't do that to your sensei, Sakura said. Yeah whatever. I'm going to go for a walk, Naruto said as he left the room. Hey whelp, Godzilla said. What do you want scale face, Naruto asked. You're being followed, Godzilla said. By who, Naruto asked. Well it isn't your teammates, Godzilla said. Probably Zabaza's little helper, Naruto said with an evil glint in his eyes. Yes why don't you have some fun before going back, Godzilla said evilly. You can come on out now. Naruto shouted. The person following tensed, but jumped down from the trees. To whom do I owe the honor of this visit? Naruto said eloquently. My name is Haku, and what is your name? Haku asked. Naruto, at your service. Naruto said. Interesting name for a person, Haku said. Yes it is. Now what do you want? Naruto asked. I do not want to fight right now, that will come later. But just pass this message to your sensei, Haku said. Zabuza is coming back to finish the job. Then Haku suddenly left. Interesting, Naruto said as he headed back. What took you so long, Dobi? Sasuke asked as Naruto came through door. Well, sensei, you were right, Zabuza isn't dead, Naruto said. I just had a talk with his helper. Great, Sasuke said in sarcastic voice. So, what's for dinner? Everyone's sweat dropped. Is food the only thing you think about? Sakura shouted. Between training and pranks, yes, Naruto said, they fell over this time. Okay now that you all had reached the top of your trees, you can guard Tazuna with Sakura, Kakashi said trying to lighten the mood. Finally, Naruto said, dinner's ready, Tsunami said. All right, Naruto said as he raced into the kitchen. After dinner, we'll all see you all in the morning. Naruto said as he went into the guest room. Hey whelp, I believe you are going to have some fun tomorrow, Godzilla said. Yes I believe so too, Naruto said falling asleep. Anything you want me to do if and when we fight, Naruto asked. 
Actually yes, I want you to tear out your enemy's heart when you are finished with him, Godzilla said with an evil laugh. You're sick, just plain sick, scale face, Naruto said appalled by Godzilla's words. Good night whelp, Godzilla said before Naruto went to sleep. So this is your bridge, Tazuna, Naruto said mildly interested. Yep, Tazuna said as he looked at the blueprints. How long before it's finished? Naruto asked. At this rate, three days, Tazuna said. Great, Naruto said before lying down. Hey where is pretty boy and pinky? Tazuna asked. They're still asleep, but if my prank works they should wake just about now. Naruto said with a smirk across his face. At Tazuna's house, Sasuke was dreaming of sticking a sword through his brother's head when a bucket of water hit him square in the face. As he got up, he tripped a wire that turned over a bottle of itching powder, when he got to the bathroom a bucket of tar fell on him. The second he turned the facet handles, a torn open pillow was slammed against his back making him look like a chicken. Once he exited the bathroom, he saw a note on his door. It said, this will teach you to sleep in. Your friend Kakashi. Back with Tazuna and Naruto. Sasuke's prank will be finished by now and Sakura's will be starting, Naruto said laughing. At the house, again. Sakura was just getting up when she felt something in her futon. When she opened her eyes, she saw Sasuke sleeping right beside her. Naturally, she blushed. When she tried to hug him, her arms went right through him. Then she realized it was a clever genjutsu. Therefore, she did the signs for the release of the genjutsu. Of course, it disappeared, but when she went outside, she saw the real Sasuke struggling to get the feathers off him. Hey, Sasuke the best way to get those feathers off is with water, Sakura said. Thank you, was all he said before he hesitantly steeped into the room. Sasuke looked around for any hidden wires he did not trip the first time he went into the bathroom, went to shower and slowly turned the knob form the outside. Good thing he did, because a large sack of flour landed in the middle of the shower. Dang Kakashi went all out, Sasuke said looking at the flour sack. He then proceeded to wash the feathers off. After a few minutes, he gets out of the shower and when he saw Kakashi, he pulled out a shuriken. What happened to you? Kakashi asked totally unaware of Sasuke's rage. You know what happened sensei, Sasuke said, his killer intent rising like a loaf of bread. Um no I don't, Kakashi said eyeing the shuriken in Sasuke's hands. Only you could set up all those traps in the house without me sensing them, Sasuke said as threw the shuriken at Kakashi. What are you talking about? I have been on a walk this entire morning, Kakashi said dodging the shuriken and other dangerous objects that Sasuke threw. That's your lamest excuse yet, Sasuke yelled as he tackled Kakashi to ground began to punch him. Then Sakura came outside. Sakura, help me, Kakashi said in between punches. Why should I? You deserve this for being late, Sakura said as she sat down and watched. For the love of God somebody help me, Kakashi shouted making some bids in the trees fly off. Back to Zuna and Naruto, again. What's wrong with all the birds? Tazuna asked as he watched the flocks of birds fly away from his house. I imagine that Sasuke is beating Kakashi up and his screams scared the birds, Naruto said in scholar kind of voice. I think I am starting to like you, kid, Tazuna said as he took a bite out of his sandwich. Same here, old man, Naruto said smiling, an hour later the trio came into view. Hey old man, here they come, Naruto said while laughing. What happened to you Kakashi? Tazuna asked inwardly laughing his head off. Sasuke here beat the crap out me for making for traps in your house, which I did not do, Kakashi shouted. Well if didn't make the traps then who di? Sasuke said before Naruto began laughing aloud. Man I knew it would be good, but not this good, Naruto said rolling around on the ground. You did this. Sasuke hissed evilly, you got it snake boy, Naruto said. I am going to kill you, Sasuke said pulling out a very large shuriken. Yes I know the entire bit, so let's just begin with the chase, Naruto said running away. I bet 20 bucks that Naruto will evade Sasuke for 5 minutes, Tazuna said. I wager 30 that Sasuke is able to hit him in that limit, Kakashi said. Deal. They both said as they shook hands. 
Get back here Dobi, Sasuke said. No way Teme. Naruto said dodging the shuriken. I got another minute before I win the bet Kakashi. Tazuna said smirking. Come Sasuke I don't want to lose my money. Kakashi shouted making Sasuke stop. What did you say? Sasuke asked. Nothing, Kakashi quickly said. Something about losing your money, Sasuke said. Nope you heard wrong my student and don't you have to catch Naruto? Kakashi said trying to change the subject. I win the bet Kakashi, pay up. Tazuna said at the wrong time. You made a bet on me and Naruto? Sasuke said. Um yes, Kakashi said backing up. I should kill you, but the beating that you had before was enough, Sasuke said. As everyone started to laugh, a thick fog started to surround the bridge. Hey guys, I think he is back. Naruto said pointing out the fog heading towards them. Why does he always appear in mist? Sure he is the demon of the mist, but he is overdoing it, Naruto said. What? Zabuza shouted from the mist. You're right Naruto, he does use it too much, Sakura said. Enough. Let's just fight already, Zabuza said drawing his sword from its sheath. Hey, where is Haku? Naruto said. He'll be here shortly, Zabuza said as he lunged for Kakashi. You three guard Tazuna, until the Haku comes. Kakashi said throwing himself on the ground to evade the sword. Kakashi then punched Zabuza in the stomach and tripped his legs. When Zabuza got up, he was met with three kicks into his back and head. Zabuza did a sideways slash with his sword, but Kakashi just evaded it. He did a downward slash and a made a trench in the ground. Kakashi threw some shuriken at Zabuza, but he just deflected with his sword. Kakashi then punched Zabuza in face and kicked him in between the legs. Ow! Zabuza said in a squeaky voice. Oh, man that has got hurt, Naruto said. For once I agree with the dobi, Sasuke said. I don't think he'll get up for a while, Godzilla said. Yep. Naruto said. Curse you, Kakashi, Zabuza said bitterly. I was aiming for your abdomen, Kakashi said looking down. Well you missed big time and where the heck is Haku? Zabuza said. With Haku. Dang it where is that bridge? I followed the map exactly, Haku said. Whoops I guess I was holding it upside down. With Zabuza, Kakashi, Tazuna, and Team 7. This is getting boring, Naruto said. Then two Senban needles embedded themselves in ground before Kakashi's feet. It's about time you showed Haku. What took you so long? Zabuza said. Sorry I had the map upside down, Haku said and everybody's sweat dropped. You did it again. How many times have you done this now? Zabuza said in an annoyed voice. So I made mistake it happens to us all, Haku said. All right just go fight his students, Zabuza said as he punched Kakashi. Fine. Haku yelled as he charged Sasuke. Haku threw two Senban needles at Sasuke, which he quickly evaded. Sasuke then tried to punch Haku, but when he did, he turned into water. Dang it a water clone. Sasuke said, I forgot what you call those. Haku then appeared behind Sasuke and gave him a kick to the head. As Sasuke staggered for a moment, Haku threw two more Senban and hit him in the right leg. Sasuke proceeded to remove the Senban from his, while Haku began to some hand seals. Sasuke sees this, runs in front of him, and puts his hand into a parry with Haku's hand. Let's see you make seals now, Sasuke said in a bragging kind of voice. Okay, Haku said as he begins make seals with one hand. What, how are you doing that? Sasuke shouts, simple my bloodline, Haku said. Oh, crap, Sasuke said trying to think of a way to counter him. Secret water art, the thousand stinging needles of death, Haku shouts as ice needles form out of the water around them. I am starting to hate bloodlines now, Sasuke said as he jumped out of the way of the needles. Dang. I missed. Haku said sadly. Haku will you stop playing with him and finish him off, Zabuza shouted. Yes sir, Haku said as he started with the seals, again. Great what is he doing now, Sasuke said annoyed. Secret water art. Demonic ice mirrors, Haku said as Sasuke was suddenly surrounded by mirrors. Mirrors, Sasuke said disappointed. They're more than enough to take you out, Haku said as he merged with the mirror. 
Something tells me this is going to hurt, Sasuke said. You are right, Haku said from in the mirrors. Just as Sasuke was going to say something back, multiple senbon embedded themselves into his legs. Arg! Sasuke screamed as the senbon hit him from all sides. Do you think I should go help him? Naruto said. Baka! Of course you should help him, Sakura said before hitting him on the head. You didn't have to hit me you know, Naruto said as he walked towards the mirrors. Another scream erupted from inside the dome. So how am I going to get in there? Naruto asked mostly to himself. Why don't you try to break a mirror whelp? Godzilla said. Right. Naruto said as he gathered chakra into his fist. With a resounding crack the mirror shattered into multiple pieces. How in the heck did you do that Dobi? Sasuke asked in surprise. I just gathered chakra into my fist, Teme. Naruto said back. Impressive. You were the first person able to break on of my mirrors, Haku said. Thank you for the compliment, Naruto said bowing. Now I must kill you both, Haku said as he threw another volley senbon at them. Naruto dodged most of them, but was hit in the right shoulder. Dang it, Naruto said dodging more. Sasuke was not as lucky as Naruto. He had been hit in his shoulders, arms, legs, and chest. Ah crap now I have to defend Sasuke. Naruto said. I guess I'll take you out first, Haku said rushing towards Naruto. Get down Dobi. Sasuke said as he pushed Naruto out of the only to be met with Senbon needles in his neck. As Sasuke fell to the ground something in Naruto snapped. Oh. Godzilla said. Suddenly Naruto just started to laugh insanely. You have just bought yourself a one-way ticket to hell. Naruto said as he started to change into his Godzilla form. Haku just stared at Naruto's changing form, wondering what was going on. A minute later the transformation was complete and he let out the signature roar that we all love. What the heck is that power? Zabuza said, I don't know, Kakashi said. As both were about to continue their fight all Haku's mirrors shattered. When the smoke cleared, they soon saw the dragon-like creature in the center with a scared Haku at his feet. Naruto looked at Haku for a second before smacking him with his tail, which sent him flying into a tree. One down, one to go. Naruto said approaching Zabuza. Naruto? Kakashi asked nervously. You guessed it, Naruto said smirking. What did you do to yourself? Kakashi asked. Think of it as my bloodline, Naruto said turning his attention to Zabuza. Very interesting bloodline you have, Zabuza said. Too bad you'll never find out how it works, Naruto said as he charged Zabuza. Zabuza dodged a punch, but could not dodge the tail swipe at his legs effectively trip him. Before he could get up, Naruto was over him and tried to smash him with his foot. He rolled to the side and got into a crouching position. Hey whelp, give him some fireworks, Godzilla said. Yes sir, Naruto said beginning to focus chakra in his mouth. What are you doing? Zabuza shouted looking at the blue orb in his mouth. Naruto did not say anything, he just kept charging the orb, until it was finally fired from his mouth. Zabuza jumped to the side right before the stream passed him. When he turned around, he let a gasp at all the damage Naruto had caused. Dang I missed. Naruto said. Naruto after this you and me are going to have a talk. Kakashi said breaking out of his trance. Fine, but just let me finish this. Naruto said looking at Zabuza. Naruto began charging another shot, but Zabuza appeared in front of him and punched him in the face. Naruto countered by kicking him in the stomach and smashing his foot. Bloody heck what does it take to bring you down, Zabuza said. More than anything you can do, Naruto said knocking Zabuza to the ground. Well, I guess I should have hired someone else to the job, a midget said before a group of bandits. Gato, what are you doing here? Zabuza asked. Isn't obvious, Zabuza, you're fired, Gato said. Well then I no longer have to fight your team, Kakashi, Zabuza said. Hey sensei, can I kill them? Naruto asked. Go ahead, Kakashi said taking out his book. Thank you, Naruto said before charging his beam again. What the heck is he doing? asked one of the thugs. What are you waiting for kill him? Gato said. Just then Sasuke woke and saw what was happening. As the thugs charged forward, Naruto fired straight at them instantly killing them all in fiery death. 
when the smoke you could see some of the few charred bodies on the ground. Holy crap! Kakashi said looking at the burned trail of death. Suddenly Naruto fell to the ground unconscious. Guess he used too much energy, Kakashi said. Wow, when did the dobi get this powerful? Sasuke said. Oh you're awake Sasuke and I don't know where he learned this, Kakashi said. I wonder where he did thought, Sasuke said. He said it was his bloodline, Kakashi said remembering. When they looked at Naruto again, he was back to normal. Well let's drag him, Zabuza, and Haku back to Tazuna's house. Kakashi said grabbing Zabuza and Haku while Sasuke grabbed Naruto. The dobi is really heavy, Sasuke said. I am not surprised, look at all the ramen he eats, Kakashi said. Hey Sakura are you just going to stand there gawking? Sasuke shouted. Sorry, Sakura said catching up with them. The dobi has got some explaining to do. Sasuke said to no one in particular. I wonder how long it's gonna be before Naruto wakes up, Sakura said trying to make some conversation. Suddenly the guest room door is slammed of its hinges and a scared Naruto runs out. He then heads toward Kakashi grabs him by the neck of the shirt and begins to shake him vigorously. Are you insane putting me in the same room with them? Naruto shouted still shaking Kakashi. Naruto! Stop shaking Kakashi so he can explain! Sakura yelled. Fine. Naruto said before he lifted Kakashi a little higher before throwing him to the ground. Thank you, Sakura. Now the reason I put you in there was because Tazuna doesn't have anywhere else to put you. Kakashi said with a smile under his mask. Bull crap, Kakashi he could have put me on the couch. Naruto said punching him in the gut. That stings. Kakashi said leaning forward. Where Sasuke Teme? Naruto asked observing the room. Sasuke, he went for a walk, Sakura said backing away from him. Oh well, when's lunch? Naruto asked causing them to fall down. I'll get it started, Sakura said racing into the kitchen. With Sasuke. Stupid squirrels. Sasuke said wiping the blood off his arm. Flashback. Sasuke was calmly walking down the path when suddenly he started to gather acorns. It just a few minutes before he had his arms full of acorns. When he continued walking, he noticed an increase of movement in the trees. All right who's out there? Sasuke shouted. A little more rustling before a great number of squirrels jumped down from the trees all hissing. Ah heck no, these are my acorns you stupid rodents. Sasuke said before he pulled out a kanai. The squirrels all leapt for him at once. Sasuke cut two of the squirrels in half, while another lost its head. A few squirrels latched onto his back and started to bite him. Sasuke quickly did the kawarimi no jutsu, leaving the squirrels to chew on a piece of wood. He appeared behind and started doing some hand seals before yelling out. Kaden. Gukaku no jutsu. Creating a huge fireball consume half of the squirrel army. Still want my acorns you rodents? He asked. They just hissed at him again before heading into the trees but one stooped at the base of the tree and threw an acorn directly at his face, which also hit his eye. Ow you freaking rat, I'll make you into a slipper, Sasuke shouted throwing a shuriken at the squirrel that squired up the tree. That right, you better run. End flashback. Try to take my acorns. Sasuke mumbled under his breath as he reached Tazuna's house. What happened to you, pretty boy? Tazuna asked. I don't want to talk about it, Sasuke said coldly. Hey Teme, what's with all the acorns and scratches? Naruto said trying to hold in his laughter. Yes please enlighten us, Kakashi said looking at the bite marks on Sasuke's arms. Squirrels, lots of squirrels, Sasuke said looking at the trees. You were attacked by squirrels? Naruto said as he burst into laughter. Sasuke then proceeded to tackle Naruto and then put him into a headlock. Naruto bite Sasuke's hand did a roundhouse kick in the stomach, and punched him in the face. Sasuke countered with a punch in his eye and kick in the pelvis. As Naruto staggered Sasuke grabbed him and threw against the wall making a nice sized dent. Naruto then kicked Sasuke back then tripped him, making him fall on and destroy the coffee table. Okay you two break it up before you destroy Dazuna's house, because I don't want to pay for the damages. Kakashi said still reading his book. Yes sir. They said in unison. Now to the business at hand, where did you learn to transform into that dragon? Kakashi asked. 
Oh come on Kakashi, you already know what it is, Naruto said annoyed. Of course I do, but I think the rest of the team should know, Kakashi said glaring at him. What will I get in return? Naruto asked. I'll treat you to ramen when we get back to Konoha, Kakashi said with a sigh. I want one more thing, Naruto said smiling deviously. Kakashi was starting to visibly sweat, and what would that be? Half of your bank account, Naruto said calmly. A cricket chirps in the distance. What? Kakashi shouted. You heard me, Naruto said smirking. Heck no, ask for something else, Kakashi said as cold as the dry ice. Fine I want you to buy me a house, Naruto said with a small pout on his face. Deal, now tell them before I change my mind, Kakashi bitterly said. Hey Sakura get in here, Naruto shouted. What do you guys want? Sakura asked through the doorway. Sit down, Naruto is going to explain the technique he used during the fight with Zabuza, Kakashi said. Okay you all know about the dragon that killed Kayubi, Sakura and Sasuke nodded. Well he's sealed inside of me and the dragon form is from the deal we made a while ago. The first cricket is joined by two other crickets that chirped in perfect union. You're carrying a dragon inside your stomach that gives you its power when needed? Sasuke said. Yep, he's okay a little annoying sometimes, but okay, Naruto. Hey! Godzilla yelled on the mindscape. Sakura on the other hand downright fainted on the spot. I think they took that rather well, so what's for dinner? Naruto asked looking sheepish. I think Sakura finished it before she fainted, Kakashi said. Good because I am as hungry as lizard in July, Naruto said in Texas accent. What did you say? Sasuke asked looking at him as if he was insane. Nothing, let's eat, Naruto said walking into the kitchen. I will never understand him, Sasuke said shaking his head before eating. Hey, did anyone check on Zabuza and Haku? Naruto suddenly asked. Kakashi races to the next room to find that they are still out. Dang they sleep like rocks. Kakashi muttered. WHO said that? Zabuza said springing to life. It's just me. Kakashi said slowly backing up. How come you didn't kill us? Zabuza asked. We had no reason to fight you anymore since Gato is a pile of ash now, Kakashi said. Really well I guess we'll just leave now. Zabuza said grabbing Haku and jumping out the window. See you later, Kakashi shouted to the retreating form, this has been one weird day. What were you shouting at? Sasuke asked causing him to jump in surprise. When did you get? Kakashi asked. When you shouted, see you later, Sasuke said. Oh, well then let's go back to eating, Kakashi said taking out his book. My life suddenly got more complicated. Sasuke said sadly walking to the table. Hey team, sorry I'm late, but I was attacked by a very large sparrow and it broke my leg, Kakashi said. After I got out of the hospital I saw a cat being eaten by crab sumo what the heck happened here? Kakashi shouted looking at the decimated training field. All the surrounding trees had slash marks in them, the grass was scorched to the point that it looked like the edge of night, and Sakura and Sasuke looked like hell. However, Naruto was untouched. Would someone mind telling me what happened? Kakashi asked, uneased. Fire breathing, man eating, woodchuck sensei. Right, Sasuke? Naruto said, eyeing Sasuke. Yes, that's right, woodchucks, Sasuke said before curling into the fetal position. Okay, then, I guess training is cancelled today, Kakashi said, backing away very slowly into the untouched tall grass. However, when he turned around, a raptor jumped out grabbed him, and pulled him into the grass. Everyone just stared. After a few seconds of very loud cursing and a screech, a bloody Kakashi walked out of the grass. I'm going to go take a very long cold shower, Kakashi said in a depressed, cold voice of doom. Naruto finally spoke up, well, that was interesting, an extinct reptile attacked our sensei. I agree, Sasuke said, so what do you want to do now? Well, I don't know about you too. But I'm getting me some lunch, Naruto said, heading toward the Ichiraku ramen stand. Okay, if you need me, I'll be across town, Sasuke said, taking off like a penguin being chased by a leopard seal. I think I will join him, Sakura said, going after him. Naruto quickly looked around before laughing insanely, 
Unfortunately, a bunch traders passed by at that moment. What are you guys looking at? Naruto shouted, making them run like chickens. Bloody tourists. At the ramen stand. All two miso, one pork, and one shrimp ramen, please. Naruto said kindly. Sure thing. The old man said, pouring the noodles into the boiling water. So, how is your team doing? He asked. They're fine, but I gave them the scare of their life this morning, Naruto said. Flashback. Insert bad screen effects. So you finally showed, Dobi. Sasuke said, still jealous of him. Stow it, Teme. I am in no mood for you. I already had a great conversation with my roommate. Naruto angrily growled. You should consider yourself lucky that you have such a powerful creature in you. Sasuke shouted. Consider myself lucky. What a joke. Sure, you get a huge amount of power, but that is nothing when everyone is afraid of you. Naruto said, his voice as cold as ice. So, Sasuke sniped, I can handle being alone. Not when you're alone for your entire life. Not when people see you as a monster. Naruto said his hands becoming claws. Um Sasuke, I think you better stop with the questions. Sakura said tentatively, watching Naruto's hands change. What's he gonna do? Beat me up? Sasuke said before a fist met with his jaw. There stood the creature with scales as hard as diamonds standing in front of Sasuke. More punches followed. In the mindscape. Oh crap, he lost it again, at least he won't kill them. Godzilla looking through Naruto's eyes before pulling out popcorn and a large sprite. Let the torture begin. Naruto yelled as he charged them. End flashback. You don't want to hear the details or you'll throw up, Naruto said. Okay then, here's your order, he said. Thank you. Naruto said quietly before digging in. An hour and twenty bowls later. Thanks for the food, old man. Naruto said as he left the stand. See you tomorrow, boy, he said, picking up the bowls. Hey, whelp, go to one of your training grounds, Godzilla said. You gonna teach me something new? Naruto asked. Of course, you idiot, Godzilla said, rolling his eyes. Okay, now what? Naruto eagerly said. Transform first and do you know how to summon? Godzilla ordered, asked his tenant. Naruto just nodded a, no, well then come to my humble little cage, Godzilla said cutting off the mind link. In the mindscape. What am I going to doing anyway? Naruto asked making Jisai. You're going to learn how to summon my council and just so you know they're about my original size so don't do it in the village, Godzilla said. Naruto just looked at then said, K. Okay. Then a scroll appeared before Naruto. Now bite your thumb and write your name in it, Godzilla ordered. He did as he was told and blood instantly dried on the parchment. Now return outside, gather three fourths of your chakra, and summon my second in command, Godzilla said again. Outside the mindscape. Kachiyose no jutsu, Naruto yelled, once again biting his thumb and slamming onto the ground. After the smoke cleared, a large creature with spiked shoulders stood in the training grounds. Suddenly a loud snore filled the field, making Ji chuckle somewhat. Naruto stared at the enormous creature before saying, this is your second in command, looking again at the slumbering giant. Yes, it must be summer in my dimension, Godzilla said trying to hold a snicker. He sleeps during summer, he asked with a questing look. You see he was created in the cold confines of space, so he doesn't like warm weather. Explained the reptile. If you don't know who he is yet, his name will come soon. Interesting, but how do I wake him? Naruto asked not wanting to wait until winter. There are two ways. First is to start a fire near his nose and the second is or kick him the in stomach. I usually use the second one, it is more fun that way, but you can't do that so first one is up. Ji said in story kind of voice. Okay then. Naruto said jumping onto the creature's face. Kaden. Karyu Enden. He said before a dragon of flame flew from his mouth onto the creature's face. A moment of silence occurs. I use these a lot don't I? Suddenly a vast and terrible roar fills the air, and Naruto quickly jumped off. Who the heck woke me up and where am I? Asked the towering in creature. Um, that would be me. Naruto quietly said. Really now, what is your name? Speak before I crush you into oblivion, he yelled. Naruto, holder of Godzilla, king of the kaiju. Naruto shouted, 
making the creature's eyes open in surprise. Commander G would never allow himself to caught by the humans, he said narrowing his eyes in hate. Hey SG, how have you been? G said through a telepathic link. G, are you really in that kid? SG said, I'm afraid so, you see we're in a different dimension and the humans somehow sealed me into this whelp. G said earning a, hey, from Naruto. SG was silent, but suddenly burst out laughing which made Naruto step back. So what do you want me to do? SG said calming down. I want you to help the whelp, when he summons you and tell the others to do the same, G said, rhyme. Okay, anything else? SG asked with an eyebrow arched. Not that I can think of, G said with a mental shrug. I have a question for the blue lizard, Naruto said, causing a vein on SG's head to grow. What is it whelp? SG asked irritated by his words. What kind of powers do you have? He asked innocently, which caused a huge grin to appear on SG's face. You shouldn't have done that kid, now you might lose half of your forest because of this, G said with sigh. I am the king of the crystals, when and wherever I want them to appear they do. I shall make one in the middle of the forest. SG said and with a snap of his fingers. A large crystal began to grow until it stood a hundred feet in the air. Cool, so any others? Naruto asked again. Hold your horses, you might have seen something like this from G. SG said charging his corona beam and shooting it into the forest setting it all ablaze. Yeah I've seen that, but his is just a lot more destructive. Naruto said looking at the still burning and charred forest. Yep well if there is nothing else, may I go? SG said with a yawn at the end. Sure you can go, have a nice sleep, Naruto said. Remember to inform the men, G said finally getting back in the conversation. See you later scale face, he said before he did the smoke cloud thing and went away. And just as SG left the rest of team 7 appeared. Naruto, what did you do to the training field and the forest? asked a concerned Kakashi. Nothing just making a few deals with another lizard, Naruto said putting his behind his back before walking away. You, got a summon contract didn't you? Kakashi said with a lazy look in his eye. Yep and Sasuke stopped glaring at my head, Naruto said starting his walk towards home. Sasuke then walked to the nearest tree and started to bang his head against it. I'm sure that's not healthy, Sasuke, Kakashi said not looking up from his book. Back off, Sasuke said before continuing, but he disturbed a nest of gold eagles. He quickly broke into run trying to escape the angry eagle. The eagle grabbed his hair and started to pull up. Now I know what you're thinking eagle lifting a person but this was a large about 7 feet most reach 6 or 7, but that is beside the point. Would someone help me get the eagle out of my hair, literally? Sasuke shouted as he was now a foot off the ground. It's just an eagle, just kick it off, Kakashi said in a lazy manner. It's an endangered species, so I can't. He yelled at his sensei's retreating form. You'll be fine. Kakashi yelled back. Curse you, he shouted out before he was pulled into the tree. So Sakura was left there, standing in the middle of a destroyed training ground. She looked at the tree, then the way her sensei left, and back at again the tree before saying, Guess I'll go home. Later that night, stupid bird and tree, said a pissed off Sasuke, crawling out of the tree. Why is my life starting to suck even more? He asked looking up at the sky. Sasuke then began his walk home, but was struck by lightning, fell into a river, and was attacked by Jaws. How he escaped, I do not know. Jaws rules. As Sasuke pulled himself out of the river he said, I hate my life right now. Suddenly a dimension shifter portal opened a few meters away from Sasuke. Soon a man wearing a strange looking beetle Amur steeped out. Excuse me are you Uchiha, Sasuke? He asked in monotone. Yes, but who the heck are you? Sasuke asked backing up a little. My name is Master Chief and that's all I am gonna tell you. MC said before he punched Sasuke in the stomach, threw him into a tree, and shot him in both the legs with a shotgun. What did I do to deserve this? He asked as a tear slid down his cheek. You were a jerk to your friends, now I have to get my money from Naruto. So see you later alligator, MC said running towards Naruto's place. Sasuke just sat there, with two gaping holes in his legs, for a moment before understanding what he said. 
I'm gonna kill him when my legs heal up, Sasuke said crawling to the nearest hospital. The next morning, Naruto was just dreaming of using Sasuke as a punching bag, when several powerful knocks on his door woke him up. Can I help you? He said drowsy. Yes I am here for my money, MC said. Oh MC, I thought you wouldn't be here for a while with the whole dimension thing. Naruto bursting awake. Really, now where is my $300? MC said getting impatient. Right, here you are and a pleasure doing business with you. Naruto said as MC left. If you need me again you know what to do, MC said as he went through the portal. I might have lost some money, but his service is worth it, Naruto said with an insane cackle at the end causing him to attain some unwanted attention to himself. What can't a guy cackle insanely to himself anymore? Hey Naruto, get your stuff and meet me in training 45, Kakashi said and disappeared as quickly as he appeared. Wonder what he wants now? Naruto said taking off after him. Monsters, mind link, scene or time change a few minutes later, at training ground 45. Sakura, Kakashi, and Sasuke were already at the training ground when Naruto appeared. Hey guys! Naruto called, walking up to them. I'll kill you! Sasuke roared, while being held back by a struggling Sakura and Kakashi. Not right now Sasuke, you can kill him later! Kakashi said calmly his face buried in the famous perverted novel. Unfortunately for Team 7's sensei, Naruto grabbed it out his hands, ran to the other end of the training grounds, and preformed a Kaiden Jutsu, reducing the beloved book into a pile of ash. Why did you do that to my book? Kakashi asked, his face twisted into a pained expression. Simple, I got tired of looking at it, Naruto grinned cheekily. I'll get you later, Kakashi growled his tone assured a thorough beating, anyway, the Chunin exams are coming up and I nominated you for this year, isn't that great? Kakashi said with sarcastic enthusiasm. Sakura, skeptical of her sensei's decision, finally spoke up. Sensei, are you sure we're ready? Of course you are, now you guys think it over and if you want to join sign on the paper and then give it to me. Kakashi said in one breath. So, see you later. With that hurried goodbye. Kakashi performed a series of hand symbols and disappeared in a cloud of smoke. They all looked at the sheets of paper in their hands, thinking very hard. Well, all except for Naruto and Sasuke, who just signed it. Wait, aren't you even gonna think about? Sakura shrieked, her concern was as clear as day in her voice. Why? I don't doubt my skills and neither does Sasuke Teme. Naruto said with a small chuckle, which turned into a cackle and then a moth flew into his gaping mouth. A few moments later after a coughing fit, I'm afraid that I have to agree with the dobi on this one, Sasuke said walking ahead. Well, I'm leaving, come back when you have some courage, challenged Naruto as he headed into town. I am gonna go home and train, you want to come wi? Sasuke tried to say as two snake-like heads burst out of the ground and pulled him under, leaving a confused and screaming Sakura. Two minutes later Sasuke's hands shot out of the ground as he dug his way out. Sakura quickly ran to him and kneeled down, checking him for injuries. Are you okay? What was that thing? She asked while backing up from the boy with the killer intent in his eyes and pitch black aura surrounding his body. I don't know, but it came as soon as Naruto left, so it was one of his pranks, he snarled through tightly clenched teeth. Well, I don't mean to be rude, but you need to take a shower. Sakura complained, holding up a hand to cover her nose. Taking a look at himself Sasuke declared, yeah, I think I will, and began walking through the shadows. Sakura just stood and watched him until he left her sight and then went off to do what she wanted. With Naruto Naruto walked merrily down the street when suddenly, a square began following him. Naruto let out an annoyed sigh. What do you want, Konohamaru? Naruto said in monotone voice. The rock stopped and exploded. One coughing fit later. I think we used too much gunpowder, hacked a blackened Konohamaru. I will ask again, what do you want? Naruto stated while crossing his arms and putting on a stern look. We want you to play ninja with us, Konohamaru cheered. And why would a ninja play being a ninja? asked Sakura, unexpectedly appearing. Hey Sakura, did you finally get some confidence? Naruto asked with a huge smile. Hey, boss, is this your girlfriend? Konohamaru asked. 
Naruto burst out laughing and Sakura drove her fist into his face. The force of her blow slammed his body into the nearby wall. Boss! Why did you that, you fire-breathing hag? Konohamaru yelled. A second later, an angry Sakura was cracking her knuckles while stomping away and an abused Naruto and Konohamaru were lying on the ground. Geez, what a punch, is she even female? Konohamaru said, Sakura froze. Guys, run for your lives, Naruto said, quickly getting up and breaking into a galloping run. While running as fast as they could, they took a sharp turn and slammed into someone. A boy dressed in black with strange facial markings, a blonde girl stood behind him. That hurt you little brat, said the figure in black, his eyes narrowing into slits. He picked up Konohamaru and began to shake him. Hey, put him down, you, cat-eared freak, Naruto quickly shouted, seeing that the hood the figure wore resembled cat ears and that he couldn't think of any other insult. This extremely senseless insult, however, did strike a nerve in the yet-to-be-named character. He threw Konohamaru towards Naruto, causing the two bodies to slam painfully together. I am not a freak, you shrimp, the figure yelled back while tightly clenching his fists. That insult sent Naruto into a frenzy. He made a mad dash towards the boy and kicked him in the stomach and followed with a few punches to head. That had to hurt, the figure's female friend nonchalantly stated while leaning against the fence. After the blows were done being delivered, the figure stood up and was about to untie the thing he had on his back, but a chilling voice suddenly called out, Konkuro, Tamari, stop your foolishness. H. Hi Gara. The now named figure, Konkuro, shakily greeted, quivering. Naruto turned to where Konkuro was looking and saw a redhead in the nearby tree peering down at them with unreadable face and blank, cold eyes. Naruto took a quick look at the other two ninja now that he had the chance. Judging by your Hite 8, you guys are from Suna. You're here for the Chunin exams, am I right? Naruto questioned and glared at the three. Correct. Gara said, his voice plain and uncaring. Great. Another emo kid, just what we need. Naruto grumbled. By the way, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto said with a sigh. Shocked looks crossed Tamari and Konkuro's faces and they began to back away from him. We'll see you back at the hotel, Gara. Konkuro said before running away with Tamari. Naruto watched them leave with a confused look while Gara simply stared straight at him. I should kill you right now, but I don't want to cause a war. Gara spoke up. EH, Naruto said and quickly moved closer to Gara, making Gara's eyes widen in surprise, and then narrow at the invasion of his personal space. What's wrong with your face? Gara's eye twitched. It is becoming increasingly difficult not to kill you, Gara said. You look horrible. Are you depressed? Naruto inquired. I have a monster that toys with my mind every night, I can never get any sleep, Gara said. I have a monster as well. So, we really are alike, you and I except that I can express emotion and my monster doesn't make me go insane each night," Naruto said. Who do you hold? Gara asked, curious. Godzilla, king of the kaiju. What about you? Naruto said in cool and intrigued voice. Ghidorah, the three-headed dragon. Gara said, making G perk up and open a mind link. Hey Ghidorah, how are you? G said. How do you think I am? I'm trapped inside this kid. Ghidorah shouted. Hey I'm stuck in a kid too, but you don't see me complaining, G said taking a drink of his red wine. Well, your kid is probably fun, this guy just mopes around and kills people all day. Ghidorah groaned. Are you screwing his mind up? G questioned. I might be, Ghidorah snapped. Well, there is your dang problem, G snarled in frustration. There is nothing else to do in here but that, Ghidorah whined. What? You mean you didn't know that with enough concentration you could turn the space into anything you want, G asked with an incredulous tone. No one ever told me that I could, Ghidorah mumbled. Well you could, but you might have damaged his mind beyond repair now, G said in an explanatory way. Um, whoops, Ghidorah chuckled, making G sweat drop. One more question, did you make a deal where he can transform into your form? G asked. Would you be mad if I mad yes? Ghidorah replied. Maybe, it depends on your answer, G said, his agitation growing. Then yes, Ghidorah said sheepishly. What were you thinking? G yelled. 
I was hungry, Ghidorah said. I'm sorry that I have to cut this conversation short, but we have to go, Naruto said breaking into the mind link. We're not finished with this Ghidorah, G shouted. See you later, G, Ghidorah shouted cheekily. The next morning in Naruto's apartment. The day of the Chunin exam. Typewriter noise in the background. Naruto awoke to an unusual noise in his apartment. When he opened his eyes, he noticed something different about his ceiling. It was covered by a swarm of lizards. He looked at the rest of the room only to find it the same as the ceiling. Gee, I have a question for you, Naruto said with a tint of anger and confusion. Yeah what is it? G asked waking up. Why is there a swarm of lizards in my room? Naruto calmly asked, eyeing the lizards. Oh, yes, them. Well, this is another bonus, of a sort, G mumbled. Even though they haven't been summoned, they'll listen to your commands. It's like having a well-trained reptilian army. So, if I told them to, get out and don't come back until I tell you, they would? Naruto growled. Yes, they would listen, G said, uncertain, exactly three seconds later. Out. Get out you lizards, Naruto screamed as he threw open the front door for the swarm to get out through. Unfortunately, the rest of Team 7 was standing in front of the doorway when the swarm left his humble abode. A second or two passed between the group. Kakashi, Sasuke, and Sakura looked at Naruto while he looked at them. This went on a while longer until Kakashi broke the silence with a question, was that your summoning contract? Um no, that, by G's words, is another power I have. It seems that I am able to control the local reptile population. Naruto explained, his face twisting in strange ways. Even after the explanation, they continued to stare. The tension in the air became as thick as a donut with a concrete filling. The dark, brooding Uchiha spoke, Can we leave now? Because if we don't, we are going to be late, he yelled, the anger visible in his eyes. Fine, but you don't to yell so loudly though, Naruto griped. Sasuke twitched. Later, at the exam place. Okay, the exam is going to be on the third floor. With that statement, Kakashi disappeared in a poof of smoke. Once they reached the inside of the building they were meet with a large crowd at a doorway. Two people stood at the top. Wonder what's going on? Naruto said. Then the man at the top began to speak, I'm sorry, but I can't let you in, he said with a sneer. But why? A girl said before being hit and rolled down. Some people in crowd began to whisper about how cruel they were. Huh, you think we're being cruel, we're being actually nice. We've taken the Chunin exam before and failed each time, one of the two men said. That is when Naruto decided to stop listening, where do you think you're going? He asked. To the third floor, where else? Naruto said with a smirk. I guess you saw through the Genjutsu but you still have to get through me, he yelled as they both prepared to kick each other. As their kicks were about to collide, a boy in green spandex intercepted them in his hands. Here is not the place to fight, the boy said before letting go of their legs. Lee, I thought we agreed not to show off, said a girl coming out of the crowd. Sorry, I guess that I got carried away, Lee scratched the back of his head. Come guys, let's go, Naruto said heading towards the stairs. Wait, what's your name? asked a white eyed boy. What's yours? countered Naruto. I asked you first, the boy snapped. Uzumaki Naruto, now yours? Naruto asked. Hayuga Neji, he said. The tension in the air once again become thick and till. And I'm Rock Lee, the boy in the bright green spandex shouted, effectively destroying the mood. Lee, would you please shut up? shouted Neji his cool exterior melting like a swan ice sculpture at room temperature. Well, see you later, Naruto said waving a hand as farewell and turning around, with Sasuke and Sakura in tow, towards the third floor. When they reached the third floor, they found that as was even more crowded than the other floors. Dang, look at all the freaks, Naruto said with a low whistle. This caused everyone's killer intent to rise and be directed towards him. You really shouldn't draw attention to yourselves, said a silver haired boy. And why should I care what you say, you four eyed freak? Naruto snapped, annoyed. I'm going to ignore that. By the way, my name is Kabuto. Do I look like I care? Naruto grumbled. I would kill you right now, but I don't want to make a scene, 
Kabuto smiled, but was inwardly trying to hold in his rage. This place is boring, I might as well spice it up. Naruto snapped his fingers and made a low pitch whistle that lasted for a second. All was quiet, not even the sound of a lonely cricket was heard. Then, the ground began to tremble, objects on the table fell off, and people were slammed into walls. Suddenly the left corner window shattered and a multitude of reptiles crawled through. Geckos, skinks, iguanas, and even a Komodo dragon, however, that one that came through the door. The rest of reptiles just sat around lazily, except for the Komodo. It immediately went to Naruto's side. Hey, scales. Naruto said, patting the top of Komodo's head. I should have known that you were behind this, Naruto, Kiba said as he and the rest of Team 8 emerged from the crowd. Hey Kiba, Shino, and Hinata-chan, Naruto said causing the Hyuga heiress to blush and hide behind Kiba. Since when do you control reptiles? Shino asked with a little, but not much, concern in his voice. I found out this morning, Naruto lazily stated. Interesting. Shino shifted uncomfortably under the reptile's gaze. Shino, whatever you do, don't let your bugs out. Naruto whispered quietly to Shino, as the reptiles had their eyes fixed on him. I am quite aware of that, Naruto, Shino said with monotone. Unfortunately for Shino, a spider had crawled onto his hand, which in turn had awakened the hungry swarm. All the reptiles, except for Scales, jumped from their lounging positions and onto Shino. Get off of me, you stupid reptiles, Shino yelled as he was tackled to the ground by the swarm. That's when the first examiner, Morino Ibiki, showed up. Quiet down, you brats, Ibiki yelled. Everyone quickly shut up. You, get rid of all these lizards, Ibiki said, pointing to Naruto. Fine. Okay guys, you can go now, except for you, Scales, you stay. Naruto said while making shooing motions at the swarm. Okay then, I want you all to sit down and try to complete this test. If you caught cheating five times, you fail. If one of you does not get all the answers correct, your team fails, Ibiki said with creepy smile. Everyone in the room was thinking the same thing, sadist. Now the first part of the test lasts for 45 minutes and second lasts for 15 minutes. Sit down and begin, Ibiki shouted. Naruto turned over his paper and glanced over the questions. I'm screwed. Yes it seems that way. Only a few people here can answer these questions. G, with Sherlock Holmes hat on, lit his oak wood pipe. What's with the hat Naruto asked? It makes me look distinguished, G said making a smoke ring. So any ideas on how I can cheat or should I just sleep it off? Naruto asked. Well you can use scales to get answers, but you can sleep it off, G said with a grin. Scales, why don't you go have some fun with the others? Naruto whispered with a wicked gleam in his eye. Scales stealthily made his way across the room. Well, as stealthy as a Komodo dragon in a classroom can be. He stopped right under Shino. A millisecond later, a scream was heard throughout the entire building. Shino jumped up, causing his paper to fall to the ground. Scales quickly memorized it and returned to Naruto. Quiet boy. Ibiki yelled at Shino. Good boy, Scales. Now tell me the answers, Naruto said while pulling out a dead rat hidden in his coat for Scales. You have to teach Scales how to be subtle, G warned. Hey Shino. You might want to go to the nurse before you die of bacteria poisoning. Naruto whispered to Shino's insect on his desk. Shino then got up and asked permission to go to the nurse. He wasn't seen until the end of the test. After Naruto wrote down the answers, he quickly went to sleep. 45 minutes later Ibiki stood in front of the sleeping Naruto. Wake up, you sleeping idiot, Ibiki yelled as he slammed his hand on the desk. Huh, what? Is it time for the tenth question already? Naruto blinked sleepily. Yes, now wake up. Ibiki snarled as he moved back towards the front of the room. Well, get on with it, Naruto said tersely. Ibiki turned and faced the test takers. Okay, if you fail to answer this right, you will remain genins forever. You can choose whether to answer this time or the next. For those of who don't want to answer now, raise your hand. Ibiki stated. Several students murmured and argued amongst the crowd. Well, I choose to stay, Naruto shouted, lifting scales onto his desk. However, some people were not as confident as Naruto, 
a third of the genins left. Ibiki looked around and said, no one else wanting to quit? He let out a soft, grumbled snort. Congratulations. You passed the first test. Ibiki said with a normal smile. Stunned looks etched the leftover genin's faces. They were about to start cheering when suddenly a black ball of clothing burst through the window. Several students were knocked to the floor and covered in shattered glass. The ball straightened and became a person, a woman to be exact. I'm Mitrashi Anko, the second examiner, so be quiet and follow me, she yelled. Man, she looks little crazy, Naruto muttered as he twirled his index finger by his head. Outside it had been at least five minutes since Anko had started laughing and she showed no signs of stopping, until Naruto spoke up and asked, Miss Anko could you please stop laughing and tell us what to do? She suddenly stopped, composed herself, and cleared her throat, she then began to explain the nature of this test. Okay, this is a simple to understand, but difficult to do test. Each team will receive a scroll with, earth, or, heaven, on it. You must get both scrolls and reach the tower in the center of the forest within five days. And you can kill the opposition in this round as well. She added as an afterthought. Most of the genin just nodded, not wanting to draw the attention of the crazy examiner. Naruto muttered, crazy psycho person, before a kanai flew a few inches from his face, also making a small cut on his cheek. What did you say about me, boy? She dangerously asked. Nothing except that you were a crazy psycho person, who probably had a bad past, he stated while rubbing his cheek. You really shouldn't anger the Junin, whelp, G said looking through his eyes. But it's so much fun to play with people's minds, Naruto whined. Yes it is, but you shouldn't if you want to have allies, G said getting rather bored with his cantainer's actions. You're probably right, but I can screw with the other villages Genin, right? He inquired. Of course you can, that is the point of this exam, to do better than them, G sighed. Great, he said cutting the mind link. As Naruto came back to reality, everybody was lining up to get his or her appointed scroll. Okay then, if you all have your scrolls, go to the gates and wait for the signal to start, Anko shouted. Well, let's get going, Sasuke said in his usual stoic manner. At gate 10, 15 minutes later, man. When is she going to give the signal? An exasperated Naruto grunted. As a flare went into the sky and the gates unlocked. About time she started us. Soccer aside as they entered. Twenty minutes later, two miles into the forest. How about we stop for a rest? Soccer panted, sitting before a small river. Yeah, take five everybody. Naruto, like a stage director, said. Nothing interesting happened for the next five minutes that they used to rest. Well with the exception of Obi-Wan, General Grievous, clone troopers, and some battle droids trying to kill each other in the clearing behind them. But, other than that, nothing else happened. Okay, time's up, so let's go, stated Naruto, as he got up from the ground. Suddenly Sakura blurted out, hey, a muffin. Indeed, it was a muffin lying up right in some dirt. As Sakura approached the delicious bakery item, she unknowingly tripped a small wire that opened a hole, full of dangerous and deadly snakes, right underneath her, as Sakura fell, she grabbed onto a vine that was on the side. Unfortunately, she was dangling only five inches above the snakes. Naruto. Help me, she screamed as a cobra lashed out at her feet. What do you want me to do? Naruto asked as he ignored her plea for help. You can control reptiles, right? So call them off, she screamed again, as a black mamba touched her foot. Fine. Snakes leave her alone and get out of that hole, Naruto ordered, disappointed. Well, that was a waste of our time, Sasuke frowned, watching the snakes leave the hole as if they were like a river flowing. I thought it was funny. Naruto smiled. Can you get me out of the hole, now, Sakura yelled from inside. Some time and place later there was no sound at all throughout the forest, except for the lightsaber clashes, blaster fire, and some blood-chilling screams, but nothing made a noise. So what are we doing now? asked a camouflaged Sakura. We're waiting for another team to pass by here, said an also camouflaged Naruto. As they waited, they saw no other teams, but a company of 20 Germans running from a battalion of Americans. The Germans stopped momentarily to open a suppressing fire on them, but the Americans were able to open fire first and cut down five of them. 
Suddenly a German to the left took out a grenade and threw it, taking two American lives. You bastard! yelled an American taking aim with his Thompson and blowing the guy's arm off. Soon neither side was falling back or running after each other, it was an all-out firefight. A German was taking aim with a Panzerschrick, when a grenade landed right in front of him and his friend. They both looked at each other and swore just before it blew up in their faces. The Germans were slowly losing their ground, but suddenly a Tiger tank came out of some trees and opened fire with the main cannon blowing three Americans away. We need the anti-tank weapons, now, shouted a corporal. An American in the back took off the case he was wearing and opened it, revealing a bazooka with six rounds. Take this, you Nazi devils, shouted the private as he launched the first round straight into the tank's front, temporarily blinding the driver, but not the gunners. Needless to say the private was torn apart by the machine gun fire. Crap, Johnson. Get that bazooka, the corporal yelled. Yes sir. Johnson shouted making a mad dash towards the anti-tank weapon. As this continued Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke just watched, hoping not to be hit with a stray bullet, the epic war scene unfold before them. As Johnson reached the bazooka, the spotter in the tank noticed him and the told the gunners. Slowly, the turret began to revolve towards his position. Johnson completed loading the second round and prepped the weapon. The tank was able to fire its main cannon, but it missed and hit a tree. Johnson just grinned as he looked at the destroyed tree. He yelled, See you in heck, you Nazi bastards. He fired the round and it a direct hit on the turret's main cannon knocking the tank out of commission. The front started to catch fire, while the crew jumped out. Yeah, he yelled as Germans started to fall back. Come on boys, hunt them down like the dogs they are, yelled the corporal. After all the American and German men left, Naruto said, Well, that was really interesting. Yep, Sasuke replied, finally able to relax, another time skip. The team had not moved since the fight between the Americans and Germans, but apparently their rest was going to be short-lived, as one of Naruto's geckos crawled to his ear and whispered something. There is a another team coming from the southwest, so, get ready, they will be here soon. Naruto said, as he realigned himself with the tree he was leaning against. Suddenly, they heard someone, a female, shout, you freaking idiot, now we're lost. And all because you had to get another gecko for your collection. Three foreign genin emerged out of the surrounding foliage, just where Naruto's gecko indicated that they would. As Team 7 peered closely at the approaching genin, two males and one female, they determined that they were from the rain country. One of the boy rain ninja just mumbled an apology. Well, that isn't good enough, the female screeched, kicking upwards between his legs. As most males do, he fell over into the fetal position and started to whimper, as he fell over and started to twitch, something on nearby rock caught his attention. He tried to refocus his watering eyes on the object and nearly squealed with girlish glee when he was able to discern what it was. To his utter delight and surprise, he had spotted another gecko sunbathing on the rock. Gecko! He screamed while scrambling to get up and catch his prize, only watch it leap away a second later. Naruto gave off an evil smile and cackle as he lured the unsuspecting rain ninja into his trap. The rain ninja quickly followed the gecko, stumbling into a small clearing. The gecko stopped in the middle of the clearing on a small, oval rock. Slowly, a head rose out of the tall grass with both arms ready to grab said reptile. However, the rain ninja then noticed something different about his surroundings than when he first arrived. Nests, with very large eggs, were right in front of him and a low rumbling growl came from behind. He slowly looked over his shoulder only to come face to face with a very angry mother Komodo, not scales though, and as he turned his head back, he meet the father Komodo. Not in the face, not in the face, he screamed before they jumped on him with snapping jaws and poisonous bacteria of doom. His screams of pain bounced off the trees, making his teammates go on the alert. What was that? asked the girl who, apparently had lost her nerve. Oh, you mean the screams of pain that are coming from your teammate? Naruto said, lying on a tree branch above their heads. Who are you? Screamed the other boy. I don't really see the point in telling you my name, because you won't live long enough to remember it. Naruto said, snapping his fingers. The tops of the trees began to shake violently, the ground started to rise, and the insides of some trees began expand. Then from the treetops, a small snake fell to the ground. 
That's what you're going to kill us with? That stupid dwarf of a snake? The rain ninja laughed. However, he stopped when the snake was joined by a thousand more snakes and reptiles, all of them glaring at him. My reptile army doesn't like to be insulted. You now have two choices. One, give me your scroll and I will let you live, or two, you die a horrible and painful death while I watch, then I take the scroll from your cold dead hands. Naruto smiled sadistically. The two rain ninja quickly huddled together to consider their options. This guy is nuts, I say we give him the scroll and leave, said the girl. Oh sure, he has a few hundred deadly snakes and reptiles, but we still outnumber him, the boy said, making girl hit him. Are you blind? He has us surrounded with an army of snakes, she pointed to the hissing reptiles. Good point, he said actually looking at his surroundings. They broke their huddle and went over to Naruto. So what's it gonna be? Naruto asked, the same creepy smile still adorned his face. We give up. Is our other teammate still alive? He asked, the concerned for his teammate. He should be, because I did not order the Komodos to kill him, just scratch the heck out of him. At least, I think I did. Naruto put his hand on his chin. Back at the clearing a boy, covered in his own blood, slowly crawled out of the field. He stopped as he once again, heard another growl behind him. Oh please no oh god, please help me, he whimpered as a pair of jaws bit down on his leg. He screamed as the Komodo began to drag him back into the field. He tried to grab onto something, but to his horror, there was nothing. He was quickly pulled quickly back into the grass and then it started rustle wildly with the sounds of snapping jaws. Then a snap was heard and the boy's head hung limply. A small river of blood slowly flowed out of his mouth, onto the grass and made a small pool. The only sound in the field was the sound of tearing flesh. Back with Naruto and the rain ninja a snake slithered its way up to Naruto's head and began to hiss. Oh, really? Naruto said while the snake nodded. What's wrong with our teammate? The girl asked. Well there is no easy way to tell so, he was eaten by my Komodos. Naruto sheepishly grinned. You said he would be alive. The boy yelled. The Komodos were hungry and he was in their sight. I couldn't have done anything anyway. Naruto glared. Bull crap, you could have stopped them if you wanted to, he yelled. Yes, I can control them when they're in front of me, but I can't do anything to stop them when they're not. Naruto leaned back against the tree. Curse you. The boy threw three kanai, but Naruto swiftly dogged them. He landed upon the other tree branch, he snapped his fingers and said, See you in the afterlife. Without hesitation, the reptile army leapt into action, completely covering the two the rain genin. Their screams of agonizing pain echoed throughout the forest. You should have done that from the beginning, Godzilla mentioned. Yes I should have, but it was a lot more fun to mess with them, and now I don't have to feed them for a while. Naruto smiled. Good point, Welp, G agreed. Naruto walked over to the bleeding corpses and took the heaven scroll from the dead guy. Eat the bodies, leave nothing left of them. Naruto commanded before leaving. Back with Sasuke and Sakura, I wonder what's is taking Naruto so long, Sakura said aloud. Knowing him he probably got his head stuck in a tree, Sasuke imagined. What was that last part, I did not catch it, Naruto growled. Um nothing, nothing at all. Sasuke cowered. Okay then, what's for dinner? Said the blonde, causing the ever famous sweat drop to make an appearance fish sakura blandly stated again i knew that i should have brought some ramen naruto whined right now it's all we have so don't complain sakura huffed naruto mumbled something like i want ramen not some stupid fish causing sakura to hit him over the head just eat it sasuke said fine naruto pouted a few minutes later so where were you anyway sakura asked Getting a scroll from the rain team and it was the one we needed. Naruto bit into his fish again. What did you do with them? Sasuke inquired. Turned them into snake food, Naruto said, making his teammates twitch. From the tree line, a pair of yellow eyes intently watched them. Manda, why don't you go and have some fun with them, the mysterious figure said, not Manda in the Godzilla. Once the figure finished uttering those words, a giant snake rushed out of the trees and headed towards them. Sasuke and Sakura turned to look at Naruto. He's not mine. 
I do believe that he is a summon, Naruto contemplated, before leaping into another spot. I guess I should summon one of your soldiers, E.H., scale face, Naruto said. Yes, you should, Ji said. Kacheyose no jutsu, Naruto yelled, causing smoke to fill the surrounding area. When the smoke finally cleared, there was not anything in sight. Hey, scale face, why didn't it work? Naruto angrily shouted. It did work, you fool, you just can't see them, Ji said. The snake's attention became focused on Naruto. As the snake leapt for him, its head was suddenly looped off. As the head and body landed on ground, the trees began to shake. Slowly, a few very large insects emerged. Welp, I'm proud to introduce the soldiers of the Kamakura's empire, Ji announced. What are your orders, master? The first Kamakura's hissed. And for those of you who do not know what Kamakuras look like, they are giant praying mantis. Stay here and make a perimeter and kill anything, even other humans, besides my team and me, that enter, Naruto said. Yes, sir, the first said as they flew off to their positions. Your snake is now dead, so come on out you coward, Naruto stated. Hello there, Uzumaki brat. The figure stated, since you already know my name, you should give me yours, Naruto said. My name is Orochimaru the Snake Senen, at your service, he said striking an incredibly gay-looking pose. That pose is horrible, Naruto looked at the Senen with disgust and said, and when was the last time you had a tan? Shut up. Now where is Sasuke? We need to have private chat, Orochimaru grinned. Oh my god. You're a gay guy like Michael Jackson, Naruto quickly pulled out a small vial and splashed the contents at him. Steam began to rise from Orochimaru's face while Naruto shouted, The power of Christ compels you, the power of Christ compels you. Somewhere else, holy water. Where's my experimental acid? The scientist said to himself. Back with Naruto Orochimaru was still rolling around on the ground and Naruto watched while eating some buttered popcorn. Hey Naruto, who's the freak with the burning face? Sasuke asked, slightly amused at the scene before him. Orochimaru finally stopped rolling on the ground and became still. Naruto went over to him and kicked him in the ribs, no response. He's dead, Naruto shrugged, walking away. Sasuke went to look at him, when he got close enough, Orochimaru jumped up and bit into his neck. Holy crap! Naruto screamed. Thinking quickly, Naruto pulled out one of those yellow phone books, you know, the ones that are over thousand pages, and threw at Orochimaru. It hit him straight between the eyes, also knocking him out. You okay? Sakura asked reappearing. Do I look okay? Sasuke rubbed his sore neck. No, not really. You have way too much grease in your sideburns and haven't you heard of hair gel? Naruto said. An ice cold glare was Sasuke's rebuttal. Shut up porcupine top. Sasuke growled. Just pointing out the obvious. Naruto smiled. Can we go now? Sakura asked. With Gara Gara's team was just heading towards the tower when Rock Nins ambushed them. Give us your scroll and we'll let you live, the middle one said. You are an annoyance in my path, Gara said his voice becoming a low growl. When Gara said that the Rock Nins backed away, Gara slowly advanced towards the position, a few golden scales appearing on his arms and legs. His shoulders began to sprout two other dragon like heads, while his own did the same. Two golden tails and wings came from his back, soon blood red eyes stared at the rock nins. The rock nins fear tripled when one of their teammates tried to attack only to be torn apart and eaten. The other two began to run, but Gara saw this and shot the gravity beams. They were caught within a second. As he pulled them in, they began to beg for lives. He did not listen to them and brutally bit of their heads. Their blood coated the trees of the surrounding area. Tamari and Konkuro just threw up in a nearby bush. Back with Naruto. How much farther until we reach the tower? Naruto asked, jumping to the next branch. We should reach it in ten minutes, Sakura sighed. That Orochimaru guy was such a gay freak, Naruto said trying to make a conversation. No denying that, Sakura said. Could we talk about something else? Sasuke asked still uneased. Sure. How did you get to be such a pompous jerk? Naruto inquired. Through years of training myself, I final hey, Sasuke yelled as remembered the question. 
Knock it off you two, Sakura yelled. Yes ma'am, they said. I am on a roll for time skips today. About time we got here. Now let's open the stupid scrolls up. Naruto grabbed them out of his backpack. Okay we open them on three. One, two, and three, Sakura said, before screaming as a Komodo came out of the smoke made by the scrolls. Scales. Naruto yelled in excitement. Suddenly Scales had a violent coughing fit, causing them to back away. A second or two later a rain headband plopped out onto the floor, making Sakura blanch. I guess you had a full meal, didn't you? Naruto rubbed the Komodo's neck. Aruka sensei Sasuke stared. Hello my three former students. I congratulate on passing the second test. Now go away, I have to get ready for my date. And with that said the message ended. Wow, I can't believe Aruka actually got a date, Naruto said. Then two other ninja jumped down and said, We shall show you to your quarters, please follow us, they said. As Sasuke and Sakura followed them, Naruto turned around briefly to look at the forest, the setting sun, and the dark skies. Hey G, did I ever send the Kamakura's soldiers home? Naruto panicked. Um, no you didn't, G said. With Orochimaru Orochimaru had just woken up to sight of four hungry, giant Kamakura's soldiers. Three ready with their claws, the other holding a very large rock. Oh, he squeaked. Back with Naruto. I better send them home. Naruto did the hand seals. Orochimaru again, it had been three days since they exited the forest of death. Naruto was currently practicing out in some random field. Three turkeys walked by, then a deer, and finally a German Panther tank division, heading towards Stalingrad, Russia. Hey G, when are you going to teach me something new? Naruto inquired. When I feel like you're ready for it. G answered. Oh come on, I'm ready and you know it, he whined. No, you're not, well at least for I have in store for you, G sighed, again, the Sherlock Holmes adorned his head with the pipe in his mouth. Where you do keep getting that hat? He asked. In the closet where else? G replied. Why do you wear that thing anyway? He again inquired. It makes me feel distinguished. G stated. Okay then, so when are you going to teach me something new? Tomorrow. G sighed. Why not today? Because I don't feel like it. Fine. Naruto shouted cutting the link like a piece of cheese. Stupid lizard. He muttered. Somewhere else all the Junins were at a small coffee shop. A few American soldiers were standing in line to order some coffee. A Sherman tank was parked outside. So, Kakashi, what's your new team like? Kurenai asked. Well, you probably already know Sasuke's and Sakura's bios, but Naruto, I'm still trying to figure him out. Don't despair my friend. I'm sure his youth will come out soon enough, Guy shouted. Guy, shut up. Asuma sighed. I hope I can figure him out before he does something that will mentally scar me for the rest of my life. I'm sure you will. Kurenai patted his back. I hope so. Kakashi sighed. With Sasuke and Sakura Sasuke and Sakura were just sitting on a bench in the park watching some modern American soldiers. When suddenly a van pulled up and man wearing some C4 jumped out shouting, Death to America. His hand clicked the button, nothing happened. He tried again, the same result. He restlessly smacked the trigger down in hopes of it going off, no luck. Oh crap, he moaned as the soldiers closed in on him. Um, I love America? Nice try, jackass, one said before punching him in the stomach. Then the rest of them started to beat him up. By the time that they finished, he was bloody pulp, whimpering on the street. One walked back over to him, took out his pistol, and said, I forgot to do something. The shot resounded throughout the park. The hole in the man's head bled freely onto the ground, and then they blew up his van. The soldiers walked away laughing. That had to hurt. Sasuke shook his head. Yep, Sakura stated, looking at the flaming van. Want to go get some pizza? Sasuke suddenly asked. Sure. Sakura replied. And so they left, but unknown to them a black carapace moved from its hiding spot in the tree above. It continued to follow them in the darkness of the trees. It jumped a few trees ahead of them. It prepared to pounce from its spot, but as it leapt, a blue bolt of energy destroyed the branch. The xenomorph hissed as it rounded about, to see nothing but air. 
The xenomorph approached the area warily and was right as another energy blast flew by its head. In the shadow of another tree, an electrical surge appeared in erratic movements. Out of them stepped the hunter of the stars. The xenomorph hissed in anger at seeing the rival species here. With nothing holding the xenomorph back, it leapt in a blinding rage, trying to sever the predator's head with its claws and tail. The predator rolled to the side and threw its spear, but the xenomorph jumped over. It landed a few feet away from the predator, but it was close enough as the xenomorph pounced upon the predator, the first jaw opening in preparation for the second to strike. As they wrestled on the ground, the predator took the hand bland and slashed part of the xenomorph's left claw off. The xenomorph used the broken claw to its advantage and started to throw the famous acidic blood at the surrounding area. A tree split in half, a bush melted, and a guy was hit in the face, but everyone ignored his screams of pain. The xenomorph tried to thrust his broken hand into the predator's head, but he evaded. With most of his weaponry destroyed or expended, the predatory fell back on the only thing to be used in a hopeless situation, the antimatter bomb. The predator quickly punched in the detonation sequence for the bomb. The xenomorph noticed this and hissed in fury. It raced towards the predator, but it was in vain. The predator suddenly started to laugh, for when the xenomorph reached him, the bomb went off. A lone soldier walked over to Baron War Ground, looked around, and said, I've had worse. That is when the Black Knight showed up and said, That's my line, you English pig dog. Get out of my way, moron. The soldier said, I move, the knight said, turning to face to him, for no man. Oh, really? Yes, really. So be it then. The knight unsheathed his sword, while the soldier just threw a grenade. A quarter of a second later, the Black Knight was gone and in his place was a small crater. Well, that takes care of that. The soldier turned only to see the knight coming at him with sword raised. Aha! Uh -huh. The knight yelled bringing down the sword only to have it miss its mark. How did you survive? I threw a freaking grenade at you. The soldier shouted in confusion and anger. That small little thing only caused me a scratch on the arm. And that's when the soldier noticed the Black Knight's missing arm. A scratch? Your arm's off, no, it isn't. Well, what's that then? Tis only a flesh wound. All right, I've heard enough of this. The soldier pulled out two more grenades, tied them together, and threw them at the knight, but he also distracted him with a glazed donut from Krispy Kreme. M, um, donut. The knight stated in trance like state, but then the grenades went off. Hopefully that took care of him, but his hopes were dashed as soon the knight's torso landed in front of him. I'm not dead, you empty headed, animal food trough wiper. What does it take to kill you? You can't, because I'm invincible. Why do I always get the crazy ones? The Black Knight always triumphs. Shut up already. Never, that's it, I'm going to find someone else to annoy. The soldier let out an exasperated sigh as he walked away. Hey, come back, you coward, I'll bite your legs off. Go to hell, you freaking moron back to naruto and that was sure interesting wasn't it what to do what to do naruto asked to no one you could flood the hokage's office with lizards for a cheap laugh or two g suggested nah he might cut my allowance naruto sighed you could fill the hot springs with snakes g stated we did that last week oh yeah that was fun while naruto was in his thinking pose a raptor, a T-Rex, and two men in a jeep with automatic rifles firing wildly sped by. However, he didn't notice. I got it. I shall terrorize Shino in the dead of night. That's it. We did that at the first exam moron. Really? We'll figure something out later, but for right now let's get something to eat. That's the first intelligent thing you said all day. Be quiet. Why should I? All you care about is getting powerful just like the lords of other lands. Be quiet. I order you to be quiet, order E.H. Who do you think you are? Bloody peasant. You have no power over me mortal, mawahahahaha. After that sentence, Naruto just blinked in surprise at G's actions. At the ramen place, ten bowls of miso ramen, old man. Naruto shouted making the other customers wince. Okay, ten bowls coming up, H. Hi and Naruto-kun, a very shy voice stuttered. Hum, oh, hey, Hanada. D do you m mind if I s sit w with you? Of course I don't. T thank why you. One miso ramen please. 
Hey whelp. Ask her out on a date. Why? Oh, why did I have to get a dense container? She likes you, moron. Really, I hadn't noticed. G started to bang his head against the cage, hard I might add. You are such an idiot, so I've been told. Just ask her out moron. Hey Hinata. Why yes and Naruto? Would you like to go out sometime? Naruto inquired, a small blush adorning his cheeks. Hinata's face, on the other hand, was the same color consistency as tomato, s sure. Great, how I pick you up around 7, oh okay, she said before passing out on restaurant floor. I was afraid that would happen, she's way too shy for her own good. Guess I should take her home, at the Hyuga Manor. Naruto approached the patio of the manor in a silent dread. He rung the doorbell and to his horror, Hiyashi, her father answered the door. You got ten seconds to tell me what happened to my daughter before I hurt you. He stated in cold tone that voiced death while he cracked his knuckles. She just fainted after I asked her out, I swear. Oh is that it then, no harm done. Said Hayuga quickly lost the cold atmosphere and returned to normal. Naruto let out a sigh of relief before it turned to dread again, feeling a killing intent from the Hayuga again. Now I have to hurt you for asking my daughter out, he stated through clenched teeth. The next scene would turn this story to a M rating for lots swearing, blood, gore, and a mention about a concentration camp for one person, so I'm not going to write it. A bloody and whimpering Naruto crawled away from the Hayuga household. Man her father is scary, I would have to agree, young whelp. Let's go home and rest for now, scale face. Shut up and get moving, er crawling. With a lot of effort on Naruto he slowly began to crawl to his home ignoring the pain all throughout his body. I am never going to be within 200 hundred yards of her father again. Yes, he sure did a number on you. I also wonder if that trap we set yesterday went off yet? With Neji the calm Hyuga branch member had just finished a nice relaxing shower, when suddenly, out of nowhere, a brick the size of a very fat squirrel shot across the bathroom and hit him straight in his face. This in turn, sent him flying out the window naked as the day he born in front of the Hyuga elders. For that reason, he did not show his face for the rest of the day because of the utter embarrassment. With Kakashi for some reason or another, I sense a disturbance in the force, he said, peeking around the corner of the hallway. A clicking lick snarl went throughout the hallway, on the hallway's side, a shadow moved back and forth from room to room. A pointed snout and tail told Kakashi who his foe was. The, thought to be dead, raptor from chapter 11 was back for revenge. Ah crap, I thought I took care of him, however, to Kakashi's dismay, the raptor heard him and quickly broke into a galloping run towards the end of the hallway, snarling wildly and vicious all the way. Kakashi took off from his spot and tried to get to his room, but the raptor leapt onto his back. Kakashi elbowed the raptor in face and it countered with a set of claws driving into his shoulder. Then their struggling brought them to the edge of the stairs. Both went down the steps while fighting. Then the raptor tripped upon a magazine that was conveniently placed on the stairs, rolled down, and was thrown through a window when he reached the bottom. Hopefully, that got rid of him. Kakashi sighed, but I'm not like that. Another more forceful snarl went throughout the his front yard, before the raptor broke through another window. This is going to take me weeks to fix after I'm done with you. Kakashi's bored expression said nothing and everything at once. I don't know what I just wrote here, but it's good. The raptor once again leapt for Kakashi's head, but Kakashi ducked, causing the raptor to just slam into a wall behind him, knocking itself out cold. So Kakashi did the sensible thing, he put the raptor in a trash bag and put it outside with the garbage. Well that takes care of that. He got a glass of water, sat down in his chair, and quietly began to read. A small tremor shook the house and the glass slightly, another one shook the glass violently, then it fell off the table shattering on the floor. Great, more glass I have to clean up, that's when the jeep plowed right into his living room. Oh, come on, I just painted that wall last Tuesday. We're sorry, but we're running for our lives. Then the T-Rex came and broke the rest of the wall and most of the roof. The guys screamed while opening fire. The T-Rex brought its head down, grabbed a man, then split him in half with powerful snap. The blood coated the walls, covering the paint. That's going to take forever to clean. The other guy ran out the front with the T-Rex following closely behind. With a scream and a resounding snap, the front yard went quiet. 
Great, just great, now I have to clean the front yard. My goodness, I do hope that this is nothing more than a genjutsu made to fool me. Back with Naruto. Yeah it went off alright, the brick isn't here. I'm surprised that it worked, you shouldn't question my genius. And, yet I do it anyway, you hurt me so, and I don't care. Shut up. Naruto finally reached his apartment and plopped down onto his bed with a heavy sigh of contentment. Remember you have a date at 7? Yeah I remember, should I take for picnic? Hey don't ask me this stuff I've never had a date either. But aren't you king of the monsters and hundreds of years old? There isn't a female monster of my species, kid. Tough. Yep. So hurry up and get ready. Slowly, Naruto pulled himself up from the bed and headed towards the shower to clean off the dried blood and dirt. Some odd twenty minutes later, he was dressed in his usual attire and was at the Hyuga Mansion gates. He cautiously walked to the front door and slightly knocked. When the door opened is when his fear doubled in two seconds flat. Hello Mr. Uzumaki. Hiyashi said through gritted teeth. Please come in, Hanada will be down in a moment. Thank you sir. Naruto relaxed, before Hiyashi grabbed him by the neck of his shirt. Now listen here boy. If you hurt her I will torture you, starve you, and kill you if you try anything, got it? Why yes yes sir. Naruto squeaked out. Good now that is all settled, would you like something to drink? Hiyashi completely lost the cold atmosphere again. How does he do that? It's a father thing. At that moment, Hanada entered the room in a very beautiful dress. H hi n Naruto, are you ready to go on our D-date? Yes let's leave, right now, don't worry sir I'll good take care of her, Naruto yelled trying to get away from Hiyashi. You better, he yelled back. Once they were out of sight Naruto asked, so, where do you want to go? I would like to try a new restaurant that opened a few days ago. Okay then restaurant it is, at the Outback Steakhouse restaurant. Are you ready to order? The nameless waiter asked. Hmm, what to have, what to have? The kookaburra wings or the five ounce steak with cheese fries? I am going to have the steak. What'll you have, Hanada? I think I'll have a salad. Very good choices they shall be here shortly. When their dinners arrived, they ate in silence, finished peacefully, paid the bill and then left. What now? Hanada asked. How about a movie? I wonder what they have playing this week. And, coincidentally, Godzilla Final Wars, was playing this week, and if you have not seen this, it is a great movie, a little corny in some places, but still good. You have your own movie series, I guess so, wait a minute where my money, I've been cheated. Gee, calm down, you're giving me a headache. Like I care, I want you hire a lawyer to sue these people. No, we would lose for sure. Now shut up so I can enjoy the movie. You cruel jerk. Another time skip yay. Naruto and Hinata were at the front steps of the Hyuga mansion. Well Hinata, I had a great time. Same here, Naruto. Hey you lost your stuttering problem. Naruto pointed out which caused the heiress to blush. Yeah I guess I have. Well I guess that I'll see you tomorrow, he said before giving a kiss her cheek. When he left, Hanada rang the doorbell and then fainted right on the spot. Back at Naruto's apartment, I think I am in love, gee. Great now I got a sap for a container, I want a switch. Shut up, you're just jealous because I have a love life now. Be quiet and go to bed, the prelims start tomorrow. The next morning, at 10.30 a.m., a monitor lizard ate a bird, that is all. How to wake him up? Oh I know, the ramen place is on fire and is going out of business. No. Huh. Wait, what? Dang you, prehistoric lizard, he shouted. Kid, the prelims are in 25 minutes, oh crap. Outside the arena place Naruto made it to the front arena where the bridge is located, just before they started roll call. Hmm, there are three more than I thought. Hopefully they'll fail the prelude to the prelims, the Hokage thought. Now, before you guys kill each other, this creepy, old, and probably insane man will ask you three questions so you can cross the bridge safely. However, if you get a question wrong you will be thrown into the gorge of eternal peril and be tortured for the rest of your days. You first Sasuke, he stated quite calmly. K. Sasuke said, approaching the bridge. Halt. Those who want to cross must answer me these question 3, ere the other side you see. The old man from scene 24 said. 
Ask me the questions, so I can get going already. What is your name? Uchiha, Sasuke. What is your quest? To kill my brother. What is your favorite color? Black. Right, off you go. Oh, thank you very much. That's easy. A rock Ginan shouted. Halt. Those who want to cross must answer me these question three. Air the other side you see. I'm not afraid. What is the square root of 6466? I don't know that. Ah, he screamed falling into the gorge. The next guy approached. Halt. Those who want to cross must answer me these question three. Air the other side you see. Ask me the questions, I'm not entirely, but somewhat afraid. What is the meaning of the universe? Um, 45. Close, but it's 42. Goodbye. This is kind of fun, ah. Uh, he screamed, like a girl I might add. Another guy came up. Halt. Those who want to cross must answer me these question 3, ere the other side you see. I'm scared shitless, but ask away. What is year Godzilla v's Ghidorah came out? Oh, 1986. Sorry, wrong answer. This isn't fair, he screamed as well. Halt. Those who want to cross must answer me these question three, ere the other side you see. Ask me already, sheesh. What is your name? Uzumaki, Naruto. What is your quest? To become Hokage. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladed swallow? What do you mean? European or African? I don't know that the old man said, before being thrown into the gorge himself. How do you know so much about swallows? Sasuke inquired, as Naruto finished crossing the bridge. When you're a ninja you have to know these things. Congratulations to all those who made it across, now we shall select, by random, who shall kill each other. In addition, we have a very special referee this year. My good friend Chuck Norris. I'm glad to see you again my friend, air what's that in your hand? The Hokage pointed to the bloody hand and still beating heart within its grasp. Nothing you need to know about, he replied coolly. Okay then, begin the selection process. Each name was displayed on the board at a fast pace, and the names it landed on was Sasuke and some other guy whose name I do not know. And begin. Sasuke started with a quick dash and a knee to the face, followed by a punch to the back off the head. However, the guy just got back up, grabbed Sasuke and slammed Sasuke's head into the concrete ground. Sasuke remained silent as he got back up, but he did wipe the gravel off his face. He took out a smoke bomb, charged again, and threw it right into the other's face. He screamed in agony as the powder from the smoke went into his eyes. Sasuke forced his hand into the other's stomach, causing a blood to fall from his mouth. He returned the blow using his left leg to kick Sasuke in the neck, stomach, and head. This continued for a while each one exchanging more powerful blows than the last, but then Sasuke took out a kanai and slashed open the man's abdomen. He was bleeding profusely as one of his organs fell onto the floor. Most of the people in the audience vomited from the sickening scene before them, while Chuck smiled. Uchiha Sasuke, winner, Chuck said, completely unfazed by the sight, still smiling. The board lit up again, the past each in rapid succession, and finally it landed on Naruto and Shino. On the outside, Shino seemed completely calm on the inside his mind was in utter chaos. The insects said go out fighting, but he wanted to give up, however, he decided to fight anyway. They both made their way down to the arena, the ultimate clash of insect versus reptile. Only the superior species would leave victories. Man I am being way too serious today. Chuck looked at them both, before he signaled them to begin. Fight. Then the Mortal Kombat theme started throughout the arena. Shino's insects came out of his sleeves and began to form a thick cloud of death, however, Naruto just looked at the growing insect swarm and quickly snapped his fingers. A millisecond a gecko landed on his head followed by another on his shoulder. When Shino looked up, to his horror, he saw that the entire ceiling was covered with a gecko army. The geckos quickly jumped from their places and into the swarm. When they landed, each of them began to grab as many insects as they could. Some geckos were swallowed up by the swarm and nothing was left except a lonely skeleton. As the battle between the insects and reptiles heated, Naruto and Shino were facing each other. Shino punched Naruto in stomach followed by two punches to the head. He kicked Naruto in the back of the knees and slammed his hands in the middle of the shoulders, forcing him onto the ground. Naruto got up, 
grabbed Shino's left leg, and then slammed him against the wall. He then looked at his geckos. The poor geckos were outnumbered and they were slowly falling to the swarm. Finish this fight already, whelp. Fine, just get off my back. Naruto slowly started to transform, the spikes ripping through the back of his clothes, his hands turning into claws, and a tail forming from behind. Shino took a step back, a small case of shock going through him. The swarm noticed Naruto flew to intercept him, but they were all burnt away in single blast of pure radiation. The rest of Shino's bug flew back inside him, but then Naruto punched him through a wall. Uzumaki Naruto, winner. Good show too, Chuck said with chuckle. Okay let's find out the next contestants. Again the board lit up and the names displayed were Gara and another unimportant character. Fight. The battle was over before it began, literally. Because Gara was in front of the guy and snapped his neck before he could anything. Gara, winner. Dang that kid is fast. You better be careful around him, whelp. Ghidorah has probably annoyed him to an insane state of mind. Even I can't stand to be around him. Yeah I get it. Don't get into a conversation with the three-headed dragon of death. You better not. Location outside Stalingrad, Russia, I mean Kahona's stadium. Okay everybody, time for the next fight, and who shall they be? The Hokage yelled. The board, however, did not light up as usual. Everyone started to chat and then began to leave. No, wait, I'll see what the problem is. The Hokage got up, took a left and went up the stairs. As he reached the door to the control room, he heard something strange. He slowly opened the door only to find that both operators were dead. Cuts were all over their bodies. What the heck is going on? A sudden hiss grabbed his attention. Behind him was a lobster, a horrible evil lobster. It lunged forward and grabbed the Hokage by the neck. He tried the fight off the vicious crustacean, but to no avail. Then the Hokage spotted a conveniently placed pot of boiling water. With a great surge of strength, he threw the lobster into the pot. It gave a silent scream as it sank to the bottom. Well, there's my lunch for today, two minutes later. Two new men were selected to run the board and they began to reboot the system. The only thing that confuses me is how a simple lobster murdered those two men, one said. A collection of hisses sound behind him, oh, crap. Back in the arena sounds of a battle being fought bounced off the walls. Suddenly the glass to the control room shattered with the Hokage and twenty lobsters falling. The armored shells of the crustaceans gave a loud crack as they hit the floor. The Hokage just landed neatly, dusted himself off, and then noticed he was being stared at from all around. The lesson there, lobsters are dangerous in groups of 355. The rest of the lobster horde hissed furiously and then disappeared into the air vents. What you all looking at? Everyone quickly turned their attention to something else. Now let's start the next fight. The board finally lit up and the names Hayuga Neji and Hayuga Hanada were shown. Finally, I can beat a main house idiot to death without them activating that stupid curse seal. Mwahaha. Neji cackled. The stares of the audience locked onto him. Uh, I mean, let's have good fight. They both made their way to the ring. A heavy tension began to build in the air. However, the tension was destroyed when Neji tripped fell down the stairs, and slammed into one of the hot dog vendors, later, the vendor sued for injury and assault. Hanada and Neji waited in their battle stances for the match to begin, then they heard snoring coming from the shade of the building. It seemed that during the lobster commotion Mr. Norris fell asleep. Hey, moron! Wake up! Someone yelled. Unfortunately for the man in the audience, Chuck woke up, jumped up into the stands, and bit a chunk out of the man's jugular vein. The screaming lasted for about five minutes before it died down. Chuck jumped back down and picked out a piece of flesh that was logged in between his teeth. Okay then, I want a fight with lots of blood and bodily harm, got that? Chuck Norris bellowed. They both nodded. Good, now fight. Neji started by activating his Bukagan, followed by a short sprint and a kick to Hinata's face. She quickly activated her Bukagan and tried to jab Neji in the chest, but was overpowered. As Hanada staggered, Neji punched her in the stomach and was going to trip her, but was stopped by a remaining lobster that had leapt into his hair. It began to claw or pinch and tear out his hair. Get out of my hair, you stupid lobster, as Neji tugged at his hair, Hanada ran up beside him and jabbed him in the chest, then gave a roundhouse kick to the face. 
While Neji rolled on the ground, the lobster fell out of his hair. Back in the stands, everyone was looking at Naruto. What? I control reptiles, not crustaceans. A single king cobra slithered up to his ear and began to hiss. What do you mean they're out of root beer? This is an outrage, take 25 other cobras with you and destroy that stand. I don't care how long it takes for you to burn at the ground, but make it as quickly as possible. The cobra nodded and left, while the rest just stared with open mouths. Don't you think that was a little extreme? Kakashi inquired. Nope, if they don't have root beer then they're going out of business for good. Now back to the fight. Hanada had put a good fight, but was slowly being pushed back, or to be blunt, killed. She had managed to get a few good hits on him, but was all for naught. With a final surge of energy, she kicked him straight between the legs before she passed out. Neji, however, fell over sideways, trying to stifle a whimper. Winner. Hayuga Neji, he may have won the match, but she got the last laugh, laughed Chuck. Medic. Neji yelled, as he crawled towards the edge. He was then carried away, giving a narcotic, and went into surgery so that he could have a family in the future. Hey are you guys still alive up there? The Hokage yelled and or inquired. Yeah, we're good. We were able to scare them off with some melted butter. Good, now let's see who going to fight next. And the next people to fight were, the Americans and the Germans. Then twenty people threw off their cloaks, took out rifles, and began a firefight around the stadium. Both teams turned over carts and other things for cover as the bullets flew by their heads. Henderson tightened the left flank, John, tell your guys to give a suppressing fire on those bastards when I say so, okay? Smith yelled. Got it. An American fell back from the barricade, clutching his leg and screaming in pain. A medic rushed over and signaled to two guys. Help me move him. Yes sir, now John. Suppressing fire. All the guys stood up and let out a volley of lead, taking three Germans out in the beginning. Smith burst into a run, ducked behind a corner, took a grenade off his belt, and threw it in front of the German barricade. The grenade exploded and now the Germans had no cover. To make it short they were all torn apart by the ensuing volley. The winners are the American team. Everyone cheered while crawling out from their hiding places. Okay now it's time for an intermission, the Hokage yelled to crowd. Enough of the yelling we can hear you fine, some guy yelled, as most of the crowd left to eat and other stuff. With a marine team, from aliens, three miles outside of Kahona. A squad of had been dispatched here to report on alien activity from the last chapter. Why did get sent to this backwater planet in the middle of nowhere? Because of alien activity in this region of the galaxy, Jack. Oh shut it Michael. Hey Boars, kill shot, Jones hurry up. Michael yelled. We're coming, don't blow your head off your shoulders. So how many have been spotted on this planet, anywhere from 10 to 300? And they sent five marines to do this? Yep. I hate this job, the only reason I joined is because I can kill these things. A beeping noise made them all stop in their tracks. Where are they coming from kill shot? Northeast 10 of them. Scouts probably, if we take them out the rest might come. Is that a thing good? Yes it is, now be quiet while I set the explosives for when the horde arrives. Ugh guys the scouts are coming towards us, then shoot them already, Michael snapped. Right. Kill shot took out the sniper rifle with 1300 yard kill radius. 10 shots sounded through the air followed by 10 screeches of pain. That's going to make one heck of a hole, and 20 minutes later. Shouldn't another patrol have been dispatched to check what happened, Boars cracked his neck. Yeah, unless they were the only ones, Jack hoped. Then beeping began again, followed by the sound of weapons arming. How many this time? Michael inquired. Only one, so either it's a Praetorian or the Queen. Hey Killshot, do you see it? No, but it says it right in front of us, ah heck. The ground started to tremble before the Queen emerged. Unfortunately for Boars the Queen's tail went through his chest and threw him aside. Kill the thing. The queen charged forward, despite the hail of bullets she was taking from the marines. She headed towards Jones, he was able to nothing as he was thrown back from the queen's punch and into a wall. A snap told them that he was dead. Michael then noticed that the queen was standing right over the explosives. Meanwhile Jack was putting up a decent fight, 
but he failed to notice the queen's tail wrap around his leg until it was too late. He was lifted into the air in front of the queen's face, which slowly began to open. Don't worry Jack, I'll save you, well I've had good run. Michael searched for the detonator quickly, trying to remember where he put it. Then he checked his wallet, and there it was. By the time he got it out of the wallet, the queen's second mouth had gone through Jack's face. Burn in hell, he pushed in the button, arming the explosives. A great fireball erupted and left nice sized hole, exactly 20 feet deep. The charred carcass of the queen lay at the bottom. Let's get the hell out of here, also tell command that the queen has been neutralized, Michael told Killshot. He took one last look, before he left Baron Battleground. And now back to our current programming. Okay now that we're all back from the intermission, our next combatants are. The board light up and the names displayed were Akamichi Choji v's Dosu. Okay you two I stopped caring a while ago if you killed each other not, so just put on a good show for the crowd, and now fight, Chuck stated. The fight started with a punch from Choji, but Dosu evaded and kicked Choji in the head. Choji tried to kick him, however, he his kick was stopped short as a high frequency sound went throughout the air. Choji, and some members of the audience, passed in a matter of seconds. Winner Dosu, and now I can't hear out of my right ear, good job you idiot. Then in the middle of the stage a large cracked formed, it began to stretch upward until finally a giant lobster appeared, it seems the lobsters from before had fetched the king of the lobsters or Ebra. People began to scream, panic, and run out of the stadium, luckily the American team was still there reloading their guns and bringing out the new ones when Ebra appeared. They circled from the stadium stairs, all firing at will, trying to force back the giant crustacean of death. Henderson, bring the flamer throwers up, then after this is finished get butter, and lots of it, Smith grinned. Three men ran onto the lower part of stage, ignited their weapons, and began to torch Ebra. Ebra let out a screech of pain and fear as the flames began to turn him to a nice dark red. After five minutes, he stopped moving and smoke began to rise from his body. Tonight we eat like kings, Smith yelled in happiness. Ropes were thrown and tied to lobster, before it was dragged off to their camp, all the while the men were yelling happiness, because they did not have to eat the rest of their rations. This is the weirdest exam yet. The Hokage brought his hand to his head and sighed. Back with Naruto in the stands during the lobster escapade, Naruto had not moved at all. Instead he stayed and watched the lobster get dragged off by the American team. Cool, hey whelp, I knew that lobster, really now? Yeah, and I always hated him, so what did he do to you? He took my food during the night, and never paid me back for it. That's the reason you hated him, he stole your food, that is kind of pathetic g. If you steal from a king, you become an enemy of the king. Touché g, touché. I always make a good point. Then the intercom system came on. Would the owner of 26 king cobras please come to the lobby? Oh boy this isn't going to be good. The lobby it was the third scene of chaos within the hour. Most of the stands were on fire or were nothing more than ash. By the front desk sat 26 cages. Bad cobras. I said destroy the one stand that had no root beer, not all of them. The snakes lowered their heads in shame and fear. Oh well, how much do I have to pay for the damages? Naruto took out his wallet. 100,000 yen. The guy lazily stated. Right, here you are. Good now take the cobras home, before I have to confiscate them, again. He showed his bleeding and swollen hand. Yeah, whatever. When Naruto opened the cages, the cobras took off and burrowed into the ground, waiting for the order to rise out and attack. Hey whelp, go outside and summon my third in command. I need his opinion on something. Oh just so you know he's a bit different from the other monsters. How? You'll see. Outside, Kachiyose no jutsu and the smoke appeared filling the plane. As the smoke cleared, the light began to refract off something. Suddenly it was focused into a beam, which went into a nearby field of corn. It quickly went ablaze, with some screams of, I'm blind, from the workers inside. A gazing, bright yellow eye shone through the smoke. A metallic like sounded throughout the plane before the ground shook. Finally, the smoke cleared and standing in the middle of the field was Kiryu or Mechagodzilla the one from Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Also I hate corn. Hey where's my repair crew and station area? 
MG quickly looked at his surroundings. Wait don't tell me, I've been summoned by the kid who has G in his stomach. G, he's made of metal. Don't say anything about it if you want to live. So what does G want? I'm waiting. Then G established the mind link. I have no idea how to do that with a machine, but oh well. MG, have things been holding up since I left? Are the humans still afraid of my return? G stated, with hint of gloating. Sort of, they afraid that you will return like before, but they spent the last 12 years making a military vehicle army. You know the macers, tanks, and some of Super X ships. Great, now how are the others? Are they still following SG's commands or are they running rampant like before? Yeah they're following him, mostly because he threatened to turn them into crystal sculptures for his front lawn. Well I found out everything I wanted to know, you may leave now. Okay, see you later G, wait, I have need of your services, MG, Naruto formally stated. And what would that be, outside Sasuke's house? Burn it to the ground, I've got something better. MG started to charge the Sub-Zero gun. A ball of blue light shot forward and struck Sasuke's house, nothing happened except that it turned blue. That's it. Wait for it. MG slammed his tail on the ground and the vibrations turned the house into dust. Cool, now you can leave. Right, see you later then. Let's leave before we get charged with destruction of property. Fine. Back at the arena. What is going on this year? First there are the lobsters, then those German and American people, and last but not least the cobras in the lobby. What next giant ants, caused from the nuclear testing in Mexico from 1954, coming up from the fissure in the stadium? The Hokage ranted. That is when the ants came from the fissure, and when the ninjas were called finally to action. The large eight-foot ants and ninjas battled fiercely. One ninja killed an ant, but he was killed by another ant, from behind when its jaws tore him in half. One ninja in corner fired a Kaden Jutsu, which burned two ants that were advancing towards him. Soon the ants began to fall back because of their rising casualties. Just so you know, the ants are from, them, a real movie. Although it was made during the 50s, it is a classic for sci-fi and monster movie lovers. Anyway, the Hokage was just sitting in his chair, a dull expression on his face. That's it, I'm going home right now, the exam will continue tomorrow. He quickly ran through the door and teleported to his home. Most of the remaining people and ninja just left the stadium and went home, out to eat, or go back to work. The Hokage had lobster for his lunch. The empty shell was thrown out the back window. With Naruto during their spare time, G had ordered Naruto to make two models of his old home. Tokyo. The first was the normal state of Tokyo, everyone living happy cheerful lives and all that. The second one was Tokyo after G visited, the usual destroyed buildings and such. Now this took a long time to create, because Naruto did not have the control to keep his hands still. They're finished. He shouted outwardly. Good, now make one of calm, open field. Filled with destroyed macers and burning tanks. Also add a miniature me in the middle. G, I'm beginning to worry about you. I sense that you are slowly going mad, because you haven't been able vent your rage on this Tokyo place. You're probably right, whelp. Go find a small remote settlement and let me have some fun, G ordered. No, oh come on. You have to let me destroy something. A small store, a forest, anything just let me destroy it. You need help, big time. Not really I just have a craving for destruction, mayhem, and carnage. Is that so wrong? Actually yes, it is wrong. G you need some serious therapy. How are you going to do that? I'm in your body so they'll think you finally snapped. Dang, you're right. Wait I know someone who won't think I'm crazy. Kakashi's house. Now let me get this straight, G, as you call him, is slowly going insane because he has not been able to destroy anything for the last 12 years? Kakashi leaned back into the chair. That's it in a nutshell, Kakashi. Hmm, tell G that he needs to find a new hobby or something occupy his interest. He said he tried everything from building ships to training but it just doesn't replace the feeling of an explosion under his feet, Kakashi just stared, his words not mine. Well if he has tried all that then there is no hope for him. By the way, this is going to cost $20 for my services. 20 bucks for this lousy therapy job? Here, I hope you choke on it, scumbag. Thank you, now get out of my house. 
I have to finish rebuilding the west wall. As Naruto walked down the street, a van pulled up and the side door opened revealing a group of mercenaries. Is the stuff in place? Yes sir, all you have to do is push the button. He handed Naruto a remote. Very good, you'll find a black leather suitcase in the park that contains your pay. It was a pleasure doing business with you, and remember this never happened. Of course. Now gentlemen I bid you goodbye. When they left, Naruto looked down at the button and pressed it. Back at Kakashi's house Kakashi had just finished covering the wall with the new plaster. Then he heard a beep. A second later, he thrown back against the opposite wall and the new wall had a large gaping hole in the center of it. The culprit of this devastation, besides Naruto, was the military explosive, C4. Kakashi got up, looked at his at wall, and gave a shout of fury. Naruto, he snarled, his voice full of scorn and hatred. Naruto. Did you see how much fun it was to blow up that wall? That is how I feel when I destroy something, too. Yes I do, and it is fun, but I can't allow you to do anything destructive. That's why you were put in my body. Fine. I'll try find something less destructive and more productive. Good. Now let's go home. Inside G's cage G had started a pace around the cage trying to think of anything that could replace his habit of nationwide destruction. As he made his tenth lap, an idea stuck him. He would just take over the whelp's body while he was asleep. Genius. Later that night Naruto had just sat down in bed and gone to sleep when his body shot up with a sudden jerk. Slowly he walked to middle of the forest and changed into his G form. He raised his head until he looking at the stars, but then he snapped it back down. Time for some fun. A cackle soundly followed. He quickly turned around and fired a blast taking most of the trees out in a fiery blaze. His tail slammed into a nearby rock turning it into gravel. Most of the animals in the forest were quickly leaving and heading to safer places. Unfortunately one of the paths that the animals were taking was caught in the crossfire and was burned away. G just let out a manacle laugh at this. And for the rest of the night most of the forest was burned to the ground creatures lay around dead or dying. Later that morning Naruto awoke with start, to find that he was not in his apartment rather the forest floor. Then he noticed the scorch marks on trees all around him. One thought came to his mind. Gee, what did you do last night? Nothing, why? Well for one I'm in the middle of a forest and it's basically burned to the ground. Care to explain? Okay. I took control of your body when you were asleep and some fun in the forest. Is that what you wanted to hear? Good, now if you do that again, I'm going to stop renting your movies. You fiend? Oh I'm the fiend? You burned an entire forest to the ground? So, I did this for fun, not because I had bad intentions. Let's just forget this happened, go home, and have a nice Thanksgiving dinner okay? Sounds good to me. At Naruto's home on Naruto's table sat a golden brown turkey, some pie, green beans, cranberry sauce, and some stuffing for the turkey. It was a holiday feast in his eyes. He sat down at the table, put a napkin on his lap, had prayer, and began to chow down on the turkey. A little while later, nothing remained on the table. What kind of turkey was that? Are you familiar with the turducken? No, not really. What is it? It's a turkey, duck, and chicken combined. Cool, is that what you ate? No, although impressive I decided to make my own variety. What a possum shoved in a polecat. No, I started out with a hummingbird. A what? Shoved that into a sparrow, put that in a Dutch hen, then a chicken, then a duck, then a turkey, and then an even bigger turkey. Two turkeys? Hey it's Thanksgiving. Put those in an eagle, then an albatross, then an emu, then an ostrich, then a leopard, then a pterodactyl, and finally stuff it in a Boeing 747. Awesome but I'm surprised that you didn't die of overeating. Yeah, I was too. What was that leopard for? Presentation. Oh. Now shut it so I can get some sleep. I have to rest for the finals tomorrow. The next day. Hello everybody, and welcome to finals of the Chunin exam. Our fighters, who made it to this round, are Naruto, Gara, Sasuke, Konkuro, and Master Chief? The Hokage shouted. However, only the first four walked out. Master Chief was nowhere in sight. Everyone was looking all round, until a loud in the middle of stadium grabbed their attention. It turned he was on top of the stadium and had jumped down. A small crater was beneath his feet. 
he slowly and calmly walked next to Naruto. Okay then. The first to fight are going to be who? The board lit up and the names chosen were Master Chief and Konkuro. Konkuro was nervous, who wouldn't be? He had never seen this man fight, so he had no idea of what kind of power he possessed. As they faced each other, Chuck started to laugh outwardly. Man I feel sorry for you kid, I hope you had a good life, now fight. Before Konkuro could take out one of his puppets, Master Chief had punched his face. Konkuro staggered back as he tried to regain his footing, but MC had kicked his feet out from under him. As Konkuro lay on the ground, he saw Master Chief loom over him. Konkuro tried to roll to the side, but was stopped by a brutal kick to the stomach. Konkuro's breath immediately left his lungs, but could not be refilled as the leg was still on his stomach. Master Chief's foot kicked him in the face this time. Konkuro looked into Master Chief's unemotional visor, as if asking for mercy, but none was given to him. With one last kick to the chest, Konkuro went into an unconscious state. Winner, Master Chief. The sum of the crowd let out a cheer, while some others handed the money they lost in the bets. Then medics went on the field and brought him to his siblings. Hey when is he going to wake up? Tamari kicked his head lightly. A couple of days at the most. Why he's just sleeping, isn't he? The medic fell over in laughter for a while and then straightened himself. Well he is sleeping, in sense. To be more specific, he's in a coma. Tamari looked at Konkuro, then the medic, and then Konkuro again, before she yelled, yes. Whatever. The medic just walked off. Now, let's see who next the fighters are. The board light up, again, went over the remaining names, and landed on Sasuke and Gara. Chuck just looked at them and said, kill. Sasuke started off by throwing three kanai followed by Kaden Jutsu, however, Gara's sand just threw them to the side. Sasuke ran up to him and was about to punch him when the sand slammed into his feet, knocking him off balance. The sand then wrapped around his foot and threw him against the wall. Then he was thrown against the opposite wall. The sand lifted him off the ground and went ten feet into the air, before dropping him onto the concrete below. Sasuke quickly got up and tried to land a hit on him, but all was blocked by the sand. Gara's sand suddenly flared and then fell to ground. Sasuke looked at Gara, but he just gave shrug. At the corner of the stadium a lump began to move through the sand, slowly it circled them, then it went under. Sasuke and Gara looked around nervously, wondering where it was. Then Gara was thrown into the air by the predator of the ground, a graboid. Sasuke took a few steps back, but all he did was grab its attention. That is when Gara landed behind the graboid. This took the graboid's attention away from Sasuke and unfortunately turned it towards Gara. It opened its mouth and the famous snake-like tongues shoot out, however, Gara did a kawarimi no jutsu and replaced himself with Sasuke. They grabbed his arms, legs, and pulled him underground. Gara just stood there, his mind working furiously to comprehend what happened. Suddenly Sasuke was spit out of the ground and hit the wall. Hard. Chuck looked at the unconscious Sasuke and the confused Gara. Winner by knockout, Gara, he yelled. Again, the crowd roared in satisfaction. The next fight of day is Naruto versus Master Chief. Naruto looked at the man with the beetle like carapace armor. The blank and emotionless visor showing nothing of the man inside. At the center of the ring, he gave a simple nod of the head towards Naruto. They both looked at Chuck, who was reading The Lord of the Rings. The two towers. Huh, what? Oh, fight. Naruto had raised his arms in defense, but Master Chief punched through it and got him in the face, sending him across the arena. Naruto groggily got up, but quickly rolled to the side as a foot landed where his head was. A small crater was in its place. Naruto gave a kick to Mick's stomach and a conjoined punch to the back. While Master Chief was down, Naruto grabbed him by the chest and threw him to the ground. I cannot be harmed or killed by mortals. Naruto was just plain scared at this point. That's when a portal, to left of the arena, opened with a marine team, from Halo, coming through it. Master Chief you are needed back at HQ, we've found another Halo. I'm coming, he looked over to Naruto before he jumped through, we'll finish this later. Um, winner Naruto Uzumaki. The crowd was so shocked that they did not even cheer. They stood there like statues. Then the Hokage brought them back to Earth. 
Okay then the final fight of the Chunin exam is Naruto Uzumaki vs Gara of the Desert. The match will start in one hour. An hour later. Okay. Let's have these two kill each so I can go home and eat the rest of my leftover lobster. As Naruto and Gara walked towards the ring, thoughts began to race through their heads. Thoughts like how am I going to survive this fight, will I be victorious, and where is the best escape route if I'm near death? Okay, have a good fight and make it quick, I want to go home. Naruto and Gara got into their fighting stances and stared each other down. That old western showdown theme started to play as a tumbleweed blew by. Get on with IT, a battalion of English knights and other soldiers suddenly yelled. Fine, no need to yell. Gara was the one that initiated the fight by kicking Naruto in the head. Naruto countered with punch to the Adam's apple or windpipe. As Gara struggled to breathe, Naruto put him into a Nelson headlock and bit off his ear. What the hell man? Gara yelled as he held the bleeding hole in his head. It would heal, however, it would take a long time. Naruto didn't answer, but kicked him square in the jaw. Kid let me have some fun. I want to spill the blood of my so-called king, Ghidorah said. So Gara did the reasonable thing, he grabbed Naruto, punched him through a wall, threw down a smoke bomb, and let Ghidorah take over. The smoke suddenly was blown away by a pair of golden wings, the dragon of death had returned. Man what a cheesy effect, an audience member said. I am not a cheesy effect. He fired a stream of lightning and turned the guy into dust. Everybody stopped talking at that point. And that is when Naruto came back through the wall in his G form. Ghidorah immediately charged at him, but Naruto punched him in the stomach at the right moment. As Ghidorah fell onto the ground Naruto slammed his tail on one of his necks. However, the other heads bit his tail and head and started to electrocute him. Naruto was then pushed back as Ghidorah regained his footing. This would be hard, since he has no arms. This time Naruto charged, grabbed Ghidorah's center head, and tore it right off. What the hell, not again. Naruto just ignored his outcry and punched the left head directly in the mouth, breaking some of his teeth. Naruto then tripped Ghidorah again and started to kick his ribs. The kicking continued until Ghidorah was in a state of unconsciousness. Winner the guy with a lizard sealed in his stomach. I'm going home now, and the killer of killers left the stadium. The promotions will be given tomorrow, so everybody out, the Hokage yelled. Wherever I choose, because I'm author. Kakashi was currently walking the forest that was behind his house. The reason, he needed to calm himself before he killed Naruto. As he stopped to stare at the wondrous surroundings, he heard a branch snap behind him. He quickly turned around and saw nothing but the forest. Another snap was heard to his left. He began to hear multiply snaps around him. The bush in front of him began to rustle wildly. He slowly and cautiously approached the bush. He made it to the bush and moved it to the side. The creature that was making it rustle, was nothing more than a harmless, little squirrel. Kakashi let out a sigh of relief, right before he tackled to the ground by his arch nemesis. The raptor, but he was not alone. This time the raptor had brought the rest of his pack. Hum, ten raptors against me. Not a good situation. One of the raptors on the left made a dash for him. He punched it, hard, across the face and it staggered into a tree. One on the right jumped into the air, claws raised to carve him to shreds. He rolled to the side and gave it a kick in head. This continued for a while with the raptors getting beat up and Kakashi evading their attacks. Kakashi had given them a great, but tiring fight. So finally, they all attacked him at once and knocked him out. A few hours later, inside a cave. Kakashi awoke on the hard stone floor of the cave. Where the heck am I? He bitterly thought. When he tried to get up, a massive pain swept through him. He looked down at his legs to see them torn open. So he did the next best thing, he crawled. After a while he reached the entrance of the cave and surprisingly there was a tour group. And here are the newly formed caves of Kohona. Our scientists have become baffled to the creation of these caves for there has been no seismic activity in this area. Help me, please help me, Kakashi practically screamed. Everyone there turned their attention from the annoying tour guide to Kakashi. They were about to help him when a raptor appeared from behind him. Kakashi screamed like little girl as he was dragged back into the cave. Well, let's move on to our famous hot springs. Right this way everyone. 
When everyone left, she took out a walkie-talkie. Sir, Project Jurassic is loose in the caves. Roger that, Scout 1. Bravo team has been dispatched to your position. Confirmed, moving civilians out of compromised area. As the tour group left for the hot springs, they noticed the six men armed with G3 automatic rifles. Franks P. O. V. It was my first assignment with Bravo Squad, we had been called in to catch some creatures that had escaped from a nearby research center. I guess they thought six guys with guns could handle some animals, I hope they were right. Will you just shut up? B3 yelled, Bravo 3, you listening to me? BL. Sorry sir, the new guy is talking to himself again. B3. Frank, what did I tell you about talking to yourself? BL. I'm sorry, but it helps to calm me down. I quietly whispered. Well stop it, Bravo 1 check out the entrance to that cave. BL. Bravo 1 peered inside the cave for a quick second and brought his head back out. They're not in there, they might have left through another exit. He shouted back to them. As he turned to walk away a clawed hand shot out from the cave and grabbed him without the others noticing anything. Hey, where's Bravo 1? BL asked, a small amount of concern in his voice. He was just there a second ago. B3 answered, I didn't ask where he was a second ago, I asked where he is now. BL shot back, I'm sure there is perfectly logical explanation. B2 quickly said, You always say that, B3. Well because, there is always a logical explanation. B2. What about that time we saw that spiral notebook, floating, in midair? B3. The window was open, it could have blown it off the table. B2. Yeah, but how did the words, get out bravo team, suddenly appear on it? B3. It could have been alpha team's notebook, they have always been jealous of us. B2. And that is when the screaming started. Shouldn't we help him? I asked slowly, back towards the path. Now hold on, we don't know if he's in trouble. Bravo leader put his hand on his head. Bravo one air you in need of assistance. Hum no answer, let's assume he's okay. What do you mean, he's screaming? I yelled, oh god that hurt, help. B1. You see, one ate my leg. B1. One ate your leg, one at his leg. I yelled. I need my leg. B1. He's got to have his leg. I said. Bravo 3. BL. What? B3. I need you to go over there, assess the situation, and report back to me. BL. Well hold on I think it's Bravo 2's turn. B3. What? B2 exclaimed. Doesn't make much sense to send in Bravo 3 after Bravo 1 went in the cave. B3. What? BL. That's B. S. In fact, I think I just got promoted to Bravo 1 so it's your turn. B2. Now even you have to see the faults in that argument. B3. Well someone needs to go in there and assess the situation. BL. I can assess the situation just fine from here, we're outside and alive. Bravo 1 walked inside the cave, and is probably being eaten. B2. He didn't walk in the cave, he was pulled in by something. I reasoned. I'm sure there is a perfectly logical explanation for that. B2. Stop saying that, I yelled. Guys help me, if you don't I'm not going to be alive anymore. B1 screamed. Then the screaming abruptly stopped. He stopped, I think he might be dead. I whispered. Bravo 1 air you in need of assistance. BL. No answer. Yeah, he's dead so let's, BL. Why are you calling me on the radio? Sobbing. Just come in here and start shooting. Okay it's time for action. Oh now it's a time for action. There was no need for sarcasm Frank. Ten minutes later reasons for time skip too much gore, blood, and swearing. Everyone except Bravo 1 lived after the assault on the cave. Even though that isn't how it happens in the movie. Commander this is Bravo team, we need a medical unit here to police the body. The specimens have been eliminated. Roger that, medical unit is en route. Come on, let's go get some beers. I'm paying. Everyone cheered at that. An hour later, Kakashi crawled out of the cave. Two bullet wounds on his chest and leg. Why did they shoot me? He then began the slow crawl home, but as usual it didn't go as planned. 
A pair of blood-red eyes watched Kakashi crawl on the dirt road. It saw him stop for a slight rest, and then it struck. Kakashi grabbed the creature that was on his back and threw it in front of him. And it was. A bunny. Sorry for throwing you Mr. Bunny, but you scared me to heck. He reached out his hand to pet the bunny, but he was stopped by a shout. Don't touch that rabbit. Why? That's no ordinary rabbit. It has a vast killing streak. This rabbit has a killing streak. You're insane. It's a harmless little rabbit. Kakashi again reached out his to pet said rabbit and when it was in reach, the rabbit bit through his hand. A loud scream of pain sounded throughout Konoha. Back at Naruto's place, time, 9 p.m. Naruto had just finished restocking his ramen supply and was on his way to bed. I wonder what tomorrow will bring. Hopefully something that has to do with destruction of property. Ignoring that, at least we'll be promoted to Chunin's now. Whatever but I still want you to do more damage. Would you knock it off? I'm not going to do any more damage than that which is required. I miss my old life of destruction and terrifying the Japanese government. Let's just get some sleep. And hopefully you won't be as weird tomorrow. And with that sentence said, Naruto blew out the candle and darkened the house. With Orochimaru, Orochimaru sat in his wheelchair, looking at the leaf village with his binoculars. I'll get that stupid little brat for crushing legs. And where did I get these binoculars? Orochimaru, are you talking to yourself again? Kabuto suddenly appeared. Shut up and roll me to the bathroom, I have some business to take care of. However when rolling him to the bathroom, Kabuto tripped and Orochimaru went down a flight of stairs. With Sasuke, where the hell is my house? The end. Now we will see you in the next video.